time for Inside the Gamecocks, the show with Phil Mullinax and J.C. Sherbert. So how many of you would say you speak English fairly well, but with some difficulty? Fat, drunk, and stupid is no way to go through life, son. You play to win the game. Now, let's take it away, J.C. and Phil. Gamecocks, the show, J.C. Sherbert. And Phil Mullinax here with you today on a Wednesday. Apologies for yesterday. Uh, made a huge mistake Monday and went bowling. <laughs> uh, I think I'm kind of a spastic bowler. And uh, my head was jerking around. The next thing you know, I got vertigo again. But I, I did get, like, they, they make a patch for activities I was not aware of. And so um, I guess I've got to get this patch for activities now. Uh to make sure that uh, I don't miss a day. I keep losing days here. But uh, certainly glad to be with all of you all today. Um, <clears throat> lots to get to, lots to talk about around Gamecock land. Uh, I do not have anything further on the Trey John Jeffcoat situation other than they're working on it. Um, and uh, frankly, I, I was hesitant to even kind of report that yesterday just because uh, it, it's kind of a situation that's uh, taken on a life of its own a little bit. Um, and, uh, all I can tell everyone out there is that they're still working on it. In, in my opinion, based on what I know about the situation, uh, and I dug, uh, I, I was able to talk on the phone yesterday, <laughs> the, uh, um, uh, speaker phone, that, that was fine. So I, mean, I did make some calls yesterday and, uh, just talking to folks about it. Uh, in my opinion, I think the kid needs to, needs to be in no question, but, uh, you know, that that's not a decision that a lot of folks. Uh, I mean, that, that's a decision that's going to go up the food chain quite a bit uh, at South Carolina. And I can't guarantee you he will. I can't guarantee you he won't. <laughs> but I can't guarantee you he will. So I know that's not the answer everybody's looking for. People want it right now. Um, and I, all I got to say is patience is uh, patience is a virtue uh, in this type of situation. Um, on the Nan award-winning Nana's Porch chat box, by the way, we thank Nana's Porch. The award-winning uh, Mecca Charlotte Mega Charlotte food truck award winner, uh, and Chris and his staff for being a part of our show, and obviously the chat box is very popular. I uh, did notice some news breaking: Kendall Bryles is probably leaving Arkansas for TCU. The question obviously comes back about Dowell Loggins maybe going back to Arkansas uh, in this business and in this climate. You never say never. Uh, I, I think Dowell Loggins, I, I don't know, you know, is Arkansas a better situation than this is Alma Mata right now? You know, they've had probably one of the crappiest uh, endings to the season, off season, you name it. Uh, they did hold on to beat Kansas uh, in the Liberty Bowl, but the Hogs fell quickly. Uh, we had Trey Biddy on. Um, first of the year when, when they played Carolina. And I think me and Phil, Phil, you and I both talked about how good a football team they were and how the program was heading in the right direction. And then all of a sudden a quarterback injury later and uh, everybody's jumping off the bandwagon a little bit yeah, out there. So they're expecting a meteoric rise for this program. And then all of a sudden it's like they just got the rug pulled out from under them and, and – <laughs> they continue to do so, you know, I hate it for I, them, but you know, <laughs> I, and I keep saying this, it's like whoever decided out there to schedule Cincinnati at BYU Liberty <laughs> and Missouri state coached by Bobby Petrino in the same seat. And you're in the sec West on top of that. Uh, Arkansas schedule was just unforgiving. And, and then like people will say, well, well, how'd they go beat BYU so bad? Well, BYU, the wheels came off of BYU this year too. Um, how they get able to go beat BBLU and beat Cam, and they lost to Liberty at home, um, and, and it's just simple. I, I think that we talked, Phil and I talked about get right games. You know, when Carolina played Charlotte and South Carolina State, right? Well, you don't have any get right games, uh, and you have to get up every single week because you're in the SEC West, and your, your administration has scheduled all these fun non conference games. Uh, <laughs> You know, that's that's tough to do. I mean, sometimes it's good to have a blowout where you just go out there, kick their teeth in, and relax. Everybody feels happy. Everybody gets to play. You know, uh, I, I don't think you get any points uh, for playing uh, a schedule like that. You know, I mean, nobody's, nobody, nobody's saying Arkansas 7-6 and six is better than other teams 7-6 and six because of who all they got to play. 
And so I, I think that, uh, you know, I, I think it's interesting. It's an interesting point, uh, you know, I, I, but I, but checking on it, I'd be surprised if Dowell Loggins uh, pulled a Bobby Crimmins and went back to Arkansas or pulled a Brian Van Gorder. That'd probably be the better comparison because you all remember Van Gorder was the uh, – Falcons linebackers coach, former UGA DC. Spurrier hires him, I think, in 09, early 09, January of 09. He was at Carolina for 30 days. Took off because the Atlanta Falcons D coordinator job came open. He went back to the Falcons. And uh, the game, the Gamecocks hired Ellis Johnson, who ironically was at Arkansas <laughs> at the time. Uh, under Petrino, he had just gotten there. And he was there for 30 days and then came back to South Carolina. So... Uh, and Ellis, you know, turned out to be a heck of a hire, right? I mean, Ellis Johnson made a huge impact on this program when, when he was the D, D coordinator, including heading up the recruitments of Stephon Gilmore, Devontae Holloman, and Jadevian Clowney out of Rock Hill. Uh, he and Lorenzo Ward both worked really hard on that. So that's uh, – I don't think we'll see a situation like that with Dowell Loggins, but you just can't um, – you can't just rule it out. You know, cause yeah. it, because of what, because of it being his alma mater, because of it being relatively new at South Carolina. But like I said, everybody I've talked to would be really, really surprised if he walked back in to what's going on in Arkansas uh, right now. Nana Sports Chat Box Award winning. Like I said, X Man Xavier. Morning, fellas. Hope you're feeling better. Yeah, Phil was a little under the weather yesterday, too. Yeah, so. yeah, same. Yeah. I, I, I didn't feel so lonely on the lonely sick boat. No, that's right. It's not just you. We were we were both there paddling upstream. <laughs> yeah, paddling. Uh, Craiger says, "Are we trying to still get Jeff Code into school?" Yep. Jerry Bragg says, "Top of the morning." <laughs> Top of the morning. JC Jason Cameron right here. Morning. Craiger says, "Apparently, if you were let go from another SEC team, you can't transfer to another SEC team." Maybe he could use SE State for a semester, then use his free transfer to come here. Well, Craig, he, he wasn't dismissed at Missouri, though. This is something that happened like a long time ago at Missouri, by the way. Not in Columbia. Yeah, this is like almost four years old, whatever's happening. Yeah, and it's, this is old, my understanding old is what crap. it's a conference thing, right? It's not necessarily the school. It could be, it could not be. Yeah, um, right. Yeah. I, I know with JC Jackson and Mike Hughes, the, uh, both wanted to transfer to Carolina. Both ended up being pretty good players, right? Mm -hmm. um, the, the SEC stepped in on that. But those guys had actually been kicked off the yeah. team, right? So mm -hmm. I, I don't I, – I, I think there's a little subtle bit of difference there. Um, but we just got to wait and see. You know, it, it, knowing what I know about it, I think it's uh, – it's a you know throwing the football aspect out of it, it it's, it's, a, it's really, really unfair to trade John Jeffcoat mm -hmm. what, what, if he doesn't get into South Carolina. Uh, no matter who's the one that ultimately made that decision and that call, uh, I think it's it, it's it's not it's not fair. You know, if they make that call to not let him in, it's completely unfair to the kid, in my opinion. Um, and that's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, Saunders <laughs> says browse to TCU would be really bad for Arkansas. What if that? Wonder if that happens, or if any of the players will follow browse or Daryl Loggins? Uh, I don't know. The portal has clothing clothing closing soon. Clothing portal strip club. There we go. Word associations. <laughs> um, the portal strip club. We have clothing optional. Clothing optional today. Here the portal. Anyway, um, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if it'd be bad for Arkansas or not. Some of their fans aren't fired up about Kendall. You know, um, I personally think that he'll step right in at TCU and continue to have a great offense out there. <laughs> you know, I, I personally kind of maybe think. Uh, that I, I don't really agree with them that he's not a good OC, but uh, it'll be interesting uh, to see if Dowell uh, does get contact. I can't imagine there not being at least a conversation. Um, Saunders says Top Golf opened in Charleston yesterday. No, Nat and I and the boys are thinking about hitting up Top Golf this Saturday. That's my only gripe about Top Golf was just the expense of it. <laughs> <laughs> That I was see the biggest thing. I was cheap. like, oh, my goodness. My, my, my guess is I'll feel a little bit like I feel out of what, what, walking out of Dave and Buster's, you know? You're like, right. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. You're it might be like worse. A, <laughs> like a, like a, you're, you're full of draft beer, uh, pretzel sausages, burgers, and such. And, and the kids, uh, you know, it's three, $300 light. 
Yeah. So that's four. <laughs> and, uh, and and your kid's got like five plastic spider rings and a roll of tickets he didn't want to spend. <laughs> that way you got to go back. <laughs> yeah, you got to go back, spend <laughs> yeah. those tickets and, and all that. And I'm like, man, the prizes these days get worse and worse and worse, you know. <laughs> I'm like, this is not even like a high quality pra- pra- you know, plastic spider ring like I wore when I was a kid. Yeah, that thing's made of some sort of rubber material. Three hundred dollars, you know, and you just look at you just hate yourself when you look at the the bill too. You're like, oh god. Oh, not to mention your stuff full of food and draft beer, and it's just like, oh, it just kind of churns in your tum- stomach. I almost said tummy. That's tummy. another that's another word like tummy and silly. You should never say to a girl I'm like, hey, look at your tummy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, nice tummy, Phil. <laughs> That's right. Good Lord. Use it with uh, the kids, Drew, but uh, yeah, not with adults. <laughs> Drew says lagging really bad for anyone else. I don't know. Yeah, that's a, that, sometimes that opener video gets a little lag on it, but that, I, I heard it, it like crinkle up a little bit. Mm-hmm. So we'll figure it out. We got we got some changes coming to the technical end of things. So stay tuned, folks. Oh, yeah. Um. Jeff Holler says, morning, gents. Thanks for what you and your staff do, JC. Well, thanks, King. Thank you, Jeff Fowler, for what you do to That's right. protect this country. Semper Fi, and thank you for your service. Yes, sir. Uh, Quantrill says, when did Carolina become Vanderbilt with admissions? I, I would <laughs> be standing on the rooftop yelling <laughs> that, Quantrill, because I've always believed it. Like when Steve Spurrier came out, and one of the best things he ever said was, we're going to admit NCAA qualified athletes here, or I'm going mm. somewhere else. And that's true. And, and I, I believe that. I don't think if you're South Carolina and you're serious about competing, uh, you don't need to put yourself at an academic disadvantage. But, Quantrill, that's not what – academics aren't – like grades, that's not – he's a uh, – Trey John Jeffcoat's an honor roll guy. Just, uh, 3.37 is what I was told. No, I mean, no problems with the academic end. Uh, this is um, – a non-academic situation, and like I said, I can't. I'm not. I'm not going to get into it. So don't. Uh, so to, to, to quote quote Nick Saban, so don't ask. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm not talking about this. So don't ask. So don't, don't ask. ask me any more questions about this. Next thing you know, he gets a question about it, and his blood. He goes, "I just said, all right, all right, all right." <laughs> <laughs> Um, Clint says, just jumped in. Is browse to TCU possible? This is a football scoop is saying uh, he's expected to be hired uh, out there. So it's a nice, sometimes football scoops, uh, they, they're pretty good. Uh, they're pretty good uh, about uh, as far as accuracy and stuff goes. But, um, you know, uh, that's uh, that's about it. So, yeah. Um, uh, sometimes they're not. That is my point. So, so there you go with that. I got distracted by a tweet. <laughs> um, Lance, what up, homie? Lance Player, what up, killers? I'm the latest yeah, late stone. Says Logan Loggins could just wait for two seasons to get the head coaching job, depending on the success of South Carolina. I agree. I, you know, if let's say Dowell Loggins is like surpasses everyone's wildest dreams or, or expectations, and he ends up, uh, he ends ends up. Uh, yeah, that job comes open in a couple of years. I'm, I'm sure he'll be right there. So, um, Clint says it's still early enough for him to take that job if they offered. Not saying he would, of course. Ashley says, Dowell going back to Arkansas will be a disaster for us. Now, the, a lot of Spencer's decision was based on log and scheme and helping him prep for the NFL. Yeah, I, I think there's some of the folks out there that are still, you know, on the this is a horrible hire bandwagon, which, you know, I. I said my piece about it when it happened, um, kind of warming up to it the more I hear and the, and the more results I see on recruiting. But uh, I'm just going to wait and wait and see what the offense looks like before making uh, judgments. But there are some, some issues there, you know, that, that you got to keep in mind. Anytime there's kind of sudden change on your staff like that, uh, the expectations change and the comfort level change. Brandon Coon says, how are things looking with Harbor and Elijah Caldwell? The crystal ball in for Eliza Caldwell, receiver out of Northwestern. Um, and uh, Harbor, you know, we'll kind of wait and see. Hadn't heard much about him. I think uh, recruiting-wise, it's been kind of more of a portal focus lately. Uh, and then they're on the road seeing high school recruits. So, uh, Jafaller says, anyone watched the game last night? I counted 36 people in the stands. Yeah, I watched part of it. 
Mike Morgan was calling the game. That was a good uh, thing. Yeah, I saw that after reading the article. I was like, oh, man, I missed Mike calling the game. <laughs> yeah, I turned it on for a while, and then it, it looked like the team wasn't really ready to show up and play and got behind and stayed behind to a team that's not all that great. So, um, mm. I don't know. So, Jared says, uh, Clint says, hypothetically th speaking, I wonder what Shane would do if Loggins did lead. I don't know. No idea. Because I don't think anybody was in the mix uh, uh, other than Dowell Loggins to begin with. Like in the mm -hmm. mix, like you'd think. You know, I'm sure he talked to a lot of people. Uh, Jared says, what about the running back from Mississippi State? That's Dylan Johnson. Are we still in the mix? Or is NIL putting us a little behind? Uh, still in the mix. Still battling for that one. Um, I was told... It could end up being that that one's more less about NIL and more about, you know, I guess more traditional recruiting things like usage in the offense and stuff. Not that he's not, you know, sold on how they're going to use him, but, you know, Washington's kind of rolled some things out for him up there and, and, and Carolina's trying to counter. So it's more of a, I guess my point I'm trying to make is it's more of a traditional recruiting type decision uh, than just kind of a money play right there. Meredith loves some top golf. Brandon says, is Hardy, is Xavier Hardy going to be able to get in? And he, cause he didn't sign early. I, I don't know. We'll see what happens with that in a couple of years. Again, I'm, um, I, I'm kind of prioritizing what I'm digging on right now. Cause everybody's mm -hmm. kind of busy, but you know, my get, my thing with that is just hang tight. Um, you know, I think there's still a chance they'll get in. Brandon says, hope we close with 2023 sign in Harbor Caldwell and Xavier and Hardy. Uh, VJ says, what's up with all the New York, New York buzz from Coach Step? Hi, well, probably had something to do with the welcome home the other night, Monday night, right? Um, there is a player out there. I mean, I don't I'm going to stop there. <laughs> I'm going to stop there. Uh, it's already still not signed because of grades. Grades off the field, you know, I, I'm going to check. I'm going to dig into that. I promise on Hardy. I promise. Um Tomorrow's episode number 100. Congratulations. Congratulations, Phil. We made it, man. I know. Right Congrats. Here. This has been awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. John says, JC, there's a new series on Hulu called The Bear. I've watched it. It's about yeah. a chef who returns home to Chicago to take over his family's beef sandwich shop. Beef sandwich. Mm -hmm. Funny with a ton of guys doing your beef for us. Yeah, give me a beef. That's what. Uh, that's my plan. Like, if, if, if the mayor up here moves... Uh, Moves, uh, tries to move the Jacksonville Jaguars to Chicago if the Bears leave Soldier Field and uh, they need a tenant, right? Yeah. Uh, they move, uh, move to move. Uh, I think they should move the Jags up here, but call them the Chicago Beef. You know, like, like, like you have beef with people, you eat beef on a delicious beef sandwich. Beef, beef, beef. Go, beef. Beef. Beef, beef sandwich. Bears. I do. The, the Bears. Galactica. That's what like, beats Bears Battlestar of the Office. <laughs> yeah. The Bear was Former a great Oklahoma. series, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was. I'm, I'm waiting. I'm anxiously waiting to get the uh, for the next uh, ser uh, season to come out. It's pretty mm -hmm. good. If that if they have another one, I don't know. But I, yeah, I liked it. I thought it was the actor in it that, that plays the guy is a really good actor. There's a lot of good th like family themes and stuff like that in it. I, I mean, it's, it's a, it's a good, good one. And it is, Chica it's peak Chicago. So it's mm -hmm. H man says Arkansas is a more brutal job than South Carolina running that sec West gauntlet every year at a recruiting disadvantage. Yeah. Keep in mind the divisions are going away though, <laughs> which I don't know if that's good or bad. I, I did. I did look at this the other day, guys. I was like, well, if there were no divisions this year, South Carolina would have finished fifth, tied for fifth in the league. It's not bad, a 14-team league. It's about to be 16. No. Yeah, you'll take that yeah. under a second-year head coach, too. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Definitely. All right, so we got to get a break here, a uh, quick break in, and we'll be back after these messages on Inside the Game Gamecocks the show on a Wednesday. Golfers and wannabe golfers, former Gamecock golfer Meredith Taylor is now a full-time golf instructor in the Midlands of South Carolina. 
in-person golf lessons are held at the Country Club of Lexington. Half hour, hour, on course nine or 18 holes. And if you're outside of South Carolina, Meredith conducts virtual lessons. Just send in your golf swing for analysis. Gift cards are available for in-person one-hour lessons. Connect on Twitter at Mayor Taylor and find her online at McKellarEnterprises.org. Her email is on the website. Schedule your next lesson today with Meredith Taylor, former Gamecock golfer. Gamecock Nation, do you need a place to stay for the big game? Many hotel booking engines keep all the commissions, but at Fan Plans, you support inside the Gamecocks, still earn your hotel loyalty points, and you receive an email with direct confirmation from the hotel. Whether you are visiting Columbia to cheer on Carolina or hitting the road to follow the team, get in the stands with Fan Plans. Uh, This is Coach O. Now back to the show. Go Tigers. In the soul. Welcome back to Inside the Gamecocks, the show, everybody. As always, we are presented by Express Sunrooms in Columbia. Give John Barber and his team down there a call, 803-446-4662, to set up a no-obligation consultation about a potential backyard retreat for your home. They'll be happy to talk to you about it and lay out some options for you. Give them a call. Thanks, Phil. Thanks for bringing us back. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, H man, but I, I, I think Arkansas is a, a much tougher job than it was when they were in the Southeastern Conference, where they basically, or I'm sorry, Southwest Conference, where they basically were kind of like Oklahoma is now in the Big Twelve. They were that border state. They would go into Texas and get kid, uh, get, get players. Um, and uh, yeah, now with Oklahoma coming into the league, Texas in the league, A and M in the league. LSU recruits. I mean, that that's not. They're not like the the Texas outpost. You know, the, the league goes beyond Arkansas now. Um, but they've had a good run of it, and uh, it, it's a program that I think uh, will be back. Uh, and I think it's an athletics program overall that that. that year in and year out is one of the better in the country or that has that potential. If you think about Arkansas, they have potential in football, sure. Uh, but men's basketball is really good, and it's back under Musselman. Uh, and then they're a national powerhouse in baseball. Uh, pretty good at women's sports. Track and field is big there. I mean, they uh, their athletics department overall is, is very well-rounded uh, at Arkansas, although they've – in men's hoops, they, they went through a time where they couldn't hire the right – they didn't seem to be able to hire the right guy. And then, uh, you know, baseball's obviously been really good. And then football did have a bottom out a bit under Chad Morris and has kind of quickly bounced back. So, uh, Quantress is on a better note. What flavor of Pringles do you like, JC? Who are you, Phil? You Pringles guy? I'm, I'm an originalist at Pringles there. I go, I go for plain. I like the plain ones. I am with you. Like bugles. I, I like the plain Yes, bugles. yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Bugle bugles are underrated. Uh, he says, maybe the ones that are manufactured in Dorchester. Uh, and, yeah, I saw what you did there, Quantro. I, I know you're sitting there in your mind thinking, they're really going to talk about Pringles flavors. Now, I love the ones that are manufactured in Dorchester, especially uh, the ones that uh, get shipped up uh, 95 to 26 and stop in the capital city of South Carolina. Yeah, that's that. right. <laughs> the big uh, can. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Saunders says, I'll never understand with how many big names and brands associated with Arkansas. They continue to struggle and everything not track and field related. I didn't read that before. I just bragged on Arkansas athletics, man. Mm -hmm. (laughs) They're good. They're just not, I mean, you know, they're not nationally, uh, national power. Now I'll tell you this, that basketball team they've got this year, that, that, that group could get to the final four. I mean, they could get back. Um, and they have won a national championship of that sport and, you know, football, people forget they've won the SEC. I mean, they came in the league the same time Carolina did, and they've won the SEC West three times. Now, the last one was in 06, and that was that was right before Alabama started their ascension. That's right before Auburn had their cycle that they do every about 10 years where they're a national. You know, I, I guess Auburn probably cycles about every seven. They'll have a team that it's a competitor nationally, a top five. You know, they're really good all the time, and they're going to get better with with Hugh Freeze. But, you know, Arkansas's last division title was before Bama and before the West became uh, tremendously – the league kind of got out of balance because the West was so much better than the East. Um, And that's that's the thing there uh, with that. But they have won three. Um, 
you know, and, and like I said, baseball has had some hard luck. Arkansas baseball has like with getting to the championships and losing. Hmm. Uh, I'm not sure they've won one. I know Mississippi State and Ole Miss are the last two national champions in baseball. Uh, Clint says getting Garrett Riley from Clemson would be fun. Boy, yeah. huh. Garrett Riley hadn't been hadn't stepped foot in the state a day or two, and then he does that. That's gonna he's gonna be an infamous. New South Carolinian. How about that? Right. Um, Drew says, can you provide a comment on a firm purchasing one of our collectives? Is this a workaround for the Park Avenue stuff? Uh, I can tell you it's not. And it's not Carolina Rise, but I think this is going to be really, really good for uh, the collective business in South Carolina. How about that? Um, Craig says, uh, if we don't get Jeff Coat, I could see Tonka getting down to about 270 and playing the end opposite, opposite Strong. Could help stopping the run, having Tonka in too. Yeah, uh, and talking to Keith about, I was talking to Keith about this the other day about Tonka because I'm I'm kind of a fan of that plan. But Keith did point out though, if you get around the edge on Hemingway, um, I mean, I see Birch has pretty good pursuit speed. Heming, I, I mean, my question is, is he, is he fast enough to keep teams from just running around him? You know, I know he'll be able to set the edge. Uh, so that would be my question, and, and, and if you got him that light. Could he, uh, how would he, uh, you know, is he still going to be able to play his physical, all that good stuff? Um, and, and look, the third part of this is because it's easy to say, well, Tonka played in when he was in, you know, a freshman, right? And so, and he's very active and he does really freaky athletic things. We all know that. And he did, did he saw, saw some spot duty at end at times. Uh, but, but there's also another element to it where you, you're really going to like recruit a kid, uh, start him at the end, big, big, you know, build him up to a tackle. And then, oh, two years later, well, we're sorry. <laughs> Perhaps you should take that 35 pounds back off and play in. I mean, I don't know how, you know, if I were talking, I'd be like, well, well wait a minute. You know, <laughs> uh, it, may, it may be. So, so my point of that is it would have to be something he would want to do as well. You know, he would have to buy in. Uh, that kind of thing. Um, Arkansas has always been weird to Quantrell. He says, I don't know if they want to be more like Texas or Tennessee. Mm. I don't either. Um, M. A. Dare says, the bear was fantastic. Beef sandwich. Mm. <laughs> Beef sandwich. Uh, Arkansas's Walmart, Jerry Jones, and a former president. How are they not more successful? I have the same question. I think it's lack of leadership at the University of Arkansas. Bro hogs. No. Yeah, Tyson Chicken's up there too, man. Um, mm-hmm. And they got beautiful facilities. It's a it's a nice place. Um, you know, North Northwest Arkansas is a beautiful, beautiful part of the country. A lot of people live there. I don't know. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, you know, and they look, you could go through every school in the league and really say, why aren't they better at this? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and guess what it is? It's the league they're in. Yeah, right. <laughs> they would be. They would be if it weren't for the, the results would be a lot better uh, if they didn't have to play the other teams in the SEC, right? Yeah, uh, I mentioned they were says, Big 12 team, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, Arkansas, everybody's – a few years back when football was really struggling out there, they were like, I don't want to turn this into the Arkansas show, right? So I'll get yeah. off the hogs, the topic of the hogs. I guess it's uh, relevant because of Dowell Loggins. Mm-hmm. Um, a few years ago, there was there, there were some Arkansas people who, a lot like Carolina people do, sometimes when the going gets really tough, uh, they pull back. They pull back. Well, let's go back to the ACC kind of card. <laughs> now, back to the ACC. now look, if the SEC expanded and took Clemson, North Carolina, FSU, Virginia, whoever else, and they put Carolina in that old ACC division. Yippee ki yay, I'm all for that, right? <laughs> Give me that all day. Mm-hmm. But I, I think with the resources the SEC provides, with the um, ability to go recruit with anybody in the country, to, to sell the league, to sell the competitiveness, uh, I think you'd be putting yourself at a huge disadvantage to go someplace else. Um, saw a Sports Talk tweet last night. There'll be big changes involving NIL and the Gamecocks. Any word or insight on this? No, it, 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 I don't know that it's big changes. I think it, it's, it's something that's probably pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good going to happen there. Um, so, uh, 
CK4540 says he wonders if Brandon Coon's alive since he doesn't have Facebook anymore. <laughs> what do we do? Uh, keep up with people, you know, before Facebook. I mean, you call them on the house phone. Yeah, you actually had to call them on the phone. <laughs> I started th- I started thinking about it the other day. I was like, you know, this was the 90s, and I didn't I didn't even have a cell till I think, 99, right? Would, would my house phone ring all day long because of the people that, you know, if, if I combined, if I compared the text messages? Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and would I get letters in the mailbox instead yeah. of email? <laughs> so, I don't know. But, yeah, it's, it's, it's good to keep up with everybody. So, certain people, you know, it, it, there's always these people you went to high school with, right, that you look back on and you're like, it, it's kind of like uh, Billy Madison, Danny McGrath, the Steve Buscemi character with a list yes. of people to kill. And you kind of you sit there because you think, man, this you know this dude was insane when we went to, when we were we were in school. I wonder what became of him. And Facebook is kind of comforting in that way because you see, well, he's got a wife and kids. And That's right. A good job, and you know, and you, you think you think about it, you're like, way to go, buddy. Way yeah. to go. Proud of you. And, and the you only made reason it. you're the only reason you're thinking that is because you've you've woken up in the middle of the night wondering if he's going to come kill you. <laughs> um, and not because you were mean to him or, or picked on him or anything like that. It's because you can't really remember if you were ever like ever said something crappy to him or, you know, maybe or, or her and it took it the wrong way and they've always remembered it or, you know, I mean, you never know. Sometimes I think about crap I said in high school. Sometimes I think about crap I said last week and I want to go back in time and whip my own ass. Uh, definitely want to whip my high school version of myself. No, so I don't yeah, remember I what kind of irresponsible crap mm-hmm. came out of my mouth. Talk way too much crap in high school. Yeah, way, way, <laughs> way too much. Too much. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, it's kind, of, it's kind of interesting. Jerry says, what about the baseball team? You see them having a shot to get to Omaha this season. The the word I've gotten is the pitching uh, is strong enough to make a run. But, um, you know, some one of the big issues around here has been scoring runs, right? Getting points yeah. on the board. So we'll see what what will happen. Uh, Jerry says, "What do y'all think the schedule will look like in 2024? Texas and Oklahoma coming in. What teams will we drop? That's interesting." Uh, Phil, I I don't I don't know. I think they're going to go to like a three six six format and go to nine league games. Okay. Um, and, and so yeah, I think three permanents three, and then rotate through the rest of the league. The other six. Yeah. And, and my understanding is, and, and look. They thought they've had this worked out a few times, but there's a there's a group led by Kentucky, and, and I, th- I think Carolina would probably prefer to stay at eight, uh, just because they have some non conference matchups scheduled, like North Carolina, NC State, Virginia Tech, Miami, that they would like to play, you know, mm-hmm. uh, and plus plus the teams that have like Clemson or, or Florida State or Louisville, but but Kentucky's mainly behind this because it's going to screw up their formula for going to bowl games every year, right? Kentucky's got, you know, Louisville, uh, two teams from the MAC, an <laughs> FCS team, and then the SEC every year. So they got they've got three built-in wins, and then their their arch their rivals getting better, but they've had success against Kentucky lately. So that's four usually. Uh, and then you're in the East, so, you, so right now you play Vanderbilt every year. So that's that's usually five. What didn't happen this year? Usually five. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you know take your pick, South Carolina, Missouri, whatever, and. You know, then, you know, they they don't they struggle to beat Tennessee and Florida, Kentucky, big time. But uh, you know, Florida's kind of changed lately. But uh, I um, you know, I I know why they're like not wanting to do it because they're like, well, well, well wait a minute, we're going to go five and seven now instead of six and six. Uh, we <laughs> need to get those bowl trophies up. So that's Kentucky, and but but they're they're wanting eight. So um, and, and I think an, an eight. An eight game would be fascinating because I'll tell you right now, and I've looked at it, I don't see it going any other way than this unless there's just some kind of like strong preference as to who from the West plays the Gamecocks or the current West plays the Gamecocks. Um, I don't know how you get around it because, you know, if you have one permanent opponent, right, that means Auburn and Alabama are going to play every year and Ole Miss and Mississippi State and Tennessee and Vanderbilt. Against, I bet Tennessee's pushing for this one. Uh, mm-hmm. It's that leaves Gamecocks basically with Kentucky every year because it, nothing else really makes a ton of sense. The league really wants to continue to push the red line rivalry between Missouri and Arkansas. Um, so, so Missouri and Arkansas will probably be permanent opponents, and 
uh, you know, or, or, or something like that. Texas would get Texas, or Texas would get Oklahoma. So what would be interesting is Texas A&M and Texas would play every other year. So I don't know. I don't know. Um, I, I, but I, I think at the end of the day, ESPN, Disney, whoever, they want nine league games, and I think they'll get their wish. And, you know, so I, I can kind of see it. But my, but my understanding is with this is that the schools that aren't what you call the traditional powers, you know, it used to be the big six. It's probably like the big – nine now because you, you throw texas a&m texas and oklahoma in there they're, they're probably going to go one way and then the rest of the school is kind of the other uh i heard tennessee was kind of in the other category now even though they've been considered big six um they're probably sick of playing alabama every year right <laughs> uh, I, I was told that it's going um so in other words if you're like tennessee south carolina kentucky george uh not, not georgia vanderbilt missouri uh old miss mississippi state like your three of permanent opponents. Like in other words, I, I could see a scenario where like Ole Miss and LSU, they they continue to play, right? But then Ole Miss's other two opponents that are the permanent opponents will be like Kentucky and South Carolina, or Missouri and uh, you know whoever. Yeah, because they got Mississippi State already sitting there. Uh, you know, and, oh, I'm sorry, Mississippi State will be one of their permanent opponents, but the other two would be. Uh, like LSU, because you'd have to have a bigger school on there. And then a, so like your Georgias and Bamas of the world, they're going to get two Georgia and Bamas of the world and then one from the other group, you know, uh, mm -hmm. to make it fair. And, and I, I think I think that's the Tennessee folks going, you guys, we, we, we've had to play Bama every single year for, for 17 years, you know, since we get for 30 years. Uh, whereas Ole Miss and Vanderbilt have some kind of thing where they – I don't want to say they made up a rivalry because it is historically a rivalry, but they made up some reason why they had to play each other every year. <laughs> oh, it's the longest running. It's the traditional. They moved that bad boy to the Titan Stadium one year. I'm like, who are you guys trying wow. to fool? <laughs> who are you guys trying to fool here? I mean, and Oxford's not that far from Nashville, but there's some historical reason why Vandy and Ole Miss say, we, have to, we must play. We must. <laughs> Genius. That's right. Genius. You know, I, you I got, think I you think, got every athletic department in the league trying to justify how we, <laughs> why they should be playing Vandy every year. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's just, I think I think we need to definitely get on that the Vanderbilt South Carolina right the his, the history. We'll do a documentary video. Yeah, the history, right. Uh, <laughs> Vanderbilt South Carolina rivalry, a tradition like any other. So. Um, Jeff Aller says me and JC are alike. I like to kick my own butt. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, Jay Diz says is Park Avenue getting scrapped now? Heard we had nothing in the contract about the NCAA. That's not true. Uh, if true, that's not true. Can we finally end the <laughs> Ray, Ray chancel the job training and get real leadership? Uh, you're not going to hire a better athletic director than Chance Miller when Ray Tanner has, has, hangs it up. I promise you that. And I can tell you that he is not, they don't share a brain, y'all. You know, they have, they're different people, different people. Um, 76 says, I love the class coming in. Oh, is Park Avenue scrapped? No, they, they have to kind of rework it um, and get it outside of the university. Uh, but this wasn't something that they just did without talking to the SEC and NCAA and everybody else. So. Um, James says he has Carolina's three is Georgia, Florida, and Kentucky. Uh, that would be what I would think, something like that, James. But it's probably because you're not going to get a Georgia and a Florida. Uh, so I, I, I saw one model with Kentucky, Georgia, and Mississippi State. Hmm. Um, but I'd take, I'd take Kentucky, Vandy, and Missouri, right? Yeah, yeah. That can't happen, though. That can't happen. No. you got to have one big guy. <laughs> and, and Georgia – I, I would think now Georgia's going to be an interesting spot because they have so many rivals. Like Tennessee's their rival, South Carolina's allegedly their, their border rival. You know, Florida is a probably the Georgia Florida game would probably because it's such a cash cow get, get not that would be their permanent oh, if there was yeah, just one. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know they have kind of a rivalry with Auburn that's been going on forever and ever and ever. See, that's yeah, um, one of the longest standing ones. So, like, Georgia's in a unique situation in that they have two arguments for two huge schools. So, 
or you know two huge programs let's mm-hmm. say because you got the you know, georgia florida border rivalry and then well i mean auburn georgia is a border rivalry too eh? yeah yeah i mean it, it's like the longest running when the, when they mm-hmm. don't play that game assuming it comes to that and you know and, and see so i think georgia and auburn still want to play and all that good stuff i i would you know, if you get Kentucky, one of the Mississippi's and Georgia, if you're South, if South Carolina's fine. It's really those three aren't going to be as as important as like who you get out of the six in a given given year, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Just go back and forth, and I think was, this will be fun. And somebody had mentioned, um, somebody had mentioned that they prefer no, they don't like permanent opponents and mix it up as much as possible. And I'm with you. Uh, the ones that's why I kind of like the eight key stick stay at eight games and, and going one seven. Because it gets wild, it gets it gets a little wild. Because you got that that seven, if you if you're lucky in a good year, like let's say this year you you're kind of looking at it doom and glooming, going oh we got Texas A and M and we got Florida and uh, we got uh, you know the, the Texas and, and Oklahoma and Arkansas this group and you're kind of going man Auburn, <laughs> and then it, it just so happens to be Auburn's down. A&M's down, Arkansas's down at the end. I mean, you could really get something going because I'll take that. Uh, I mean, it, it's almost like a little more like roulette kind of deal than it is now where, you know, no, nothing changes except one team every year. You play yeah. the same, but, th- but then you go, well, we only have one permanent opponent. So that means really South Carolina every year would only play like Kentucky and Clemson and everything else would be fresh, fresh mm-hmm. and new. Fresh. Uh, fresh and new right there. Um, your Auburn, Georgia should be considered, Quantrell says, an in-state rivalry, considering where Auburn's located. Yeah, my buddy, my Auburn fan's like, Auburn's really in East Georgia. And yeah. Alabama, he called he called Alabama UAT, the University of Alabama, Tuscaloosa. UAT <laughs> is in <laughs> West, uh, East Mississippi. East oh, yeah, Mississippi. West Miss, East Mississippi. And he's in West. I'm sorry. Yeah, West Georgia. He's in, yeah. Auburn is in West Georgia because it's East Alabama. So anyway, I, I probably screwed that up. My boy Robert Watson used to work with me at the Gainesville Times. Big old Auburn guy. Big old Auburn guy. And knows football too. Knows football really well. Always wish he'd he'd, he'd come worked in recruiting with me because he was a really good reporter and probably would have loved it. Um. All right. James has a picture of the entire league's three opponents. Uh, you want to send that to inside the game guys at gmail.com and Phil can put it up. Yeah, um, man, we'll show it. Yeah. And, and this is James, this is just a model you worked out, right? This is not some kind of top secret document or anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I think we'd love to see that on the graphics. And uh, so send it to us inside the game guys at gmail.com. And uh, we are going to take a break. Don't forget Jamie Bradford's coming up to talk with us on the other side. We're going to, we're going to have, um, a lot of we're gonna some conversations <laughs> with him. I'm gonna I'll get his take on this permanent opponent thing. Uh, and like I said, it's not uh, you know it's uh, it's one of those things. Jamie actually just tweeted, "Give Beamer a ton of credit for Dowell Loggins early in the search." Uh, it's uh, we'll talk about this um, schedule and thing. We'll, we'll try to continue to. We're still tr- trying to follow the Jeff Coat story. Uh, I know that's got, that's what you guys want to hear. And all this other stuff. So we'll keep we'll keep at it, um, uh, and all that, as well as give you any kind of uh, breaking news uh, from the recruiting trail that could happen today. Oh, by the way, Heisman odds are out. Spencer Rattler forty to one. Uh, Cade Klubnik from Clemson twenty five to one. I don't know who the heck uh, yeah. DJ uh, DJ. I'm just going to do like Todd Ellis and call him DJ. DJ's at fifty to one. Uh, Drake May, who is, uh, so, so listen, South Carolina will be facing the Heisman front runner in the opening week of the season. Drake May, uh, best odds, five to one, Caleb Williams, six to one, Jordan Travis, 10 to one, Arch Manning, 75 to one. Well, I believe that when I see it. Yeah. All right. We'll be back after these messages inside the Gamecocks, the show. Hey man, are you sick and tired of your business computer guy? Yes, he takes forever to call me back and doesn't always respond to the requests. Yeah, same here. I'm paying him good money. I constantly have issues, and I'm worried he's not backing up my network and securing it properly. You know what, Phil? Let's ask Stone Blanton. Hey, JC and Phil, if you want a solution to your IT problems, give Heritage Digital a call. 
Our boy Matt Odom has a low cost, one price solution that will get you running right. Call 843-699-1001 or heritagedigital.com and ask for Matt. He will hook you up today and tell them Stone City. If you're looking to sell or buy multifamily property right here in South Carolina, the Burgesson team of Remax at the Lake can help you get to closing fast and easy. Adam and Derek Burgesson both are very proud Gamecocks and are more than happy to assist you with any of your commercial real estate needs all across the state. You can email Adam at aburgesson at remax.net. That's A-B-E-R-G-E-S-O-N at remax.net to get your next deal underway. The Burgesson team, proud sponsors of Inside the Game Cox. Family vacations, a new car, a new boat, all cost money, but you don't necessarily have to make more to afford any of that if you can save cash that's flying out the window now. I help Consulting can help you finally get the kids to Disney World, upgrade the minivan, or drop that new boat in the water next summer. Let Daniel and I help Consulting consult with you. No fees, just savings. You pay them a percentage of those savings. Save on essential services, credit card fees, you name it, let them find it. These folks are incredible. iHelpConsulting.com. How can I help you? This is Fresh and All-American, Nicky Memorial of the Carolina Gamecocks, and you are listening to the show with JC and Phil. Welcome back, everybody. Inside the Gamecocks, the show is presented to you by Express M Rooms in Columbia. And don't forget, the first hour of the show is presented to you by Cindy Searfoss and the Coldwell Banker Kane Realty team here in the upstate. Give Cindy a call, 864-414-5271 for all your upstate residential real estate needs. And I saw that uh, Coach Step was looking for uh, some dinner recommendations there, JC, in the Spartanburg area. I'm sure we could come up with some decent ones there. <laughs> Spartanburg, yeah, a dinner in Spartanburg would be tough. I haven't lived there in so long. Uh, I'm still a Basil's guy. Kind of if like Basil's is still flavor. around, yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know if it's still around or not. I, like, gosh, last time I went to Basil's, I think it was 20, summer of 2012, I was in town. Um, you, you got your staples there. You got your wades, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, you got your, your greasy spoons. Like, heck, the beacon's not, I wouldn't even call the beacon a greasy spoon. I call it like a greasy bucket. <laughs> Uh, uh, look, <laughs> that big old that big old pot of chili, man. Have you, have you ever seen that thing? Yeah. At the beacon? That big old pot it's of like chili, man. Chili too is like they probably yeah. just keep a little bit in there. It's like it's got seasoning from a hundred years ago. Yeah, man. <laughs> they never clean it's it. Like, just boil it over. <laughs> crazy. Sonder says basil, basil Thai, the ones in Charleston fall all the way down the hill. No, no, I don't go to Thai restaurants for obvious reasons. <laughs> Because I get everything. If I won't tie, I'm not going to get any better than here. You know. That's true. That's true. Yeah, However, she, if, she if, you, all the if you, yeah, if you aren't attached to someone who's Thai, Basil's is an excellent Thai restaurant. Yeah, <laughs> that I do recommend. Yeah, that's that. But that's a different Basil's though, Son. Yeah, We're talking completely about Basil's different. Grill. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just like a. It's got steaks, some Greek dishes, pasta, that kind of thing. I don't think uh, I've been to Spartanburg since they revitalized their downtown or whatever they were they, they've been doing up there. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's been man, a long time, I, I was there for my for my friend's I guess Joel's wedding, my friend Joel's <laughs> wedding. Last time I've been in downtown Spartanburg for more than like a minute. Yeah. You know? <laughs> um, gosh, I can't believe it's been it's been four years since I've been back for Christmas into Spartanburg. I need to get back anyway. Uh, no time to. Reminisce right now, you know. <laughs> uh, M8 Air says selecting Greer is even better. Um, Clint says Wade seemed like Wade seems like it'd be right up Coach Steph's alley. Yeah, I mean it's right up my alley, dude. It's tough to see. see here's the thing too. Nobody, out, like, there's a certain way Wade's makes its macaroni and cheese, right? And a lot, and my grandmother makes it that way. My mom makes it that way. Nobody else gets it. No, I mean it's like you could you could try to make mac and cheese like mom and like Wade's, but it fails miserably. And I just don't, I don't know how I don't know what it is. Uh, so I'm always like, you know, uh, how Neil Young was searching for a heart of gold. I'm searching for a pot of Wade's macaroni and cheese. <laughs> searching for a pot of mac and cheese. Uh, Basil's is in Spartanburg is Italian. It's kind of Italian. 
Uh, they do have some Italian, it's Greek, Greek and Italian and all that. It's good. But, hey, how about Capri's? I think there's still one left in Boiling Springs. Is Spring. there? Yeah. There's mm-hmm. a Capri's Italian. My mom worked at Capri's Italian when I was a baby in, in the belly. Um, new way for a redneck burger. Yep. No discussion oh, yeah. of Spartanburg cuisine is complete without uh, without the new way. That's right. So, Saunders says Jeff Coat deadline is midnight tonight, right? I thought it was midnight last night. Uh, Lance says turned in late. Is there still a path for Jeff Coat? There is, is my understanding. Um, until I'm told, no, it's not definitely not happening, which they've said it's not happening. But then they said, well, wait a minute. I think there was a lot of a lot of pushback about it yesterday. To be honest, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if phones were ringing in certain offices, and things like mm-hmm. that. But uh, unfortunately, my fa- my head was spinning, so I couldn't really spend much time on the message board or all that. But I did get on the phone about it, and it seems like it'd be pretty good. Uh, it seems like it'd be a pretty good effort made to get him in. And like I said, I, I did some research on the exact situation. There's a lot of stuff going around that just wasn't true. Um, and figured out like what the deal is and knowing what the deal is. I, I think that somebody, whoever it is, whoever, whoever the buck stops with, <laughs> whoever mm-hmm. gives, gives it the final no, if they give it a no, um, shoot, I, I just, uh, I think they're doing the kid a complete disservice and, and really, uh, whoever that is probably doesn't need to be making decisions that impact people's lives, mm. right? So there you go. Um, with that, all right, we're not doing another break. No, are we? no, no, no. JC not till calling noon. on the JC calling on the landline. Does my sound sound okay today, Phil? Yeah, man, you sound great today. Yeah. All right, good. Yeah, yeah. I I ditched the look. I'm speaking to you guys through this magic box called a computer. Uh, and I decided to use the microphone that's connected to the the webcam I have. No. And uh, it's, uh, it sounds better than the daggum microphones I had before. Yeah, man, you're coming through loud and clear. Loud and clear. So that that's the deal there, JC calling on the landline. <laughs> that's probably the thing. I, yeah, seriously, I, I was like, man, but what would my life be like if, if, if we still had landlines? They're like, bring, bring, bring. <laughs> You probably Lillian. wouldn't be able to host the show from home because it'd be ringing off the damn hook. <laughs> yeah. He's like, that L- L- was a joke about your reference to the 90s. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry, man. I, I'm getting better, but <laughs> uh, head gets a little foggy sometimes these days. But yeah, you're, you're right. The 90s was... Uh... <laughs> oh, you know, you know the one that the, 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 when you're in an office, it's, qu- it's quieter. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna shoot this phone, Eddie. Yeah. I'm gonna shoot this phone, Eddie. I hate this phone. <laughs> but uh, no, I, I just uh, that's the one thing there. Um. So yeah. So we got uh, the the what is it the the the, law, the the odds for the Heisman next year. So you have um. You know you have that in, uh, with Rattler being right there, and but probably a little bit more interesting is Drake May is number one. Um. I'm hoping and praying for you guys, for my sake, for all of us, say, our sakes, uh, for the North Carolina game uh, in Charlotte, that there's finally a decent kickoff time. Uh, yes. So I think the more hype Drake May gets in the offseason, the more likely they'll be like, huh, let's put this game on prime time. Okay. <laughs> you know, which would be mm-hmm. awesome. I mean, that would be, and I, and I think, I think Carolina fans are going to show up for that one, both, both North and South Carolina. Um, SEC school's best player. Uh, Debo obviously got it for Carolina, and I think, I think right now, Phil, I think you'd have to say that Carolina's best player in the NFL. This is a, uh, this is from Alex Anstead, a college football writer. Um, yeah, I would think so. You know, I don't know. It's interesting that you could make the argument for a specialist in suck up. <laughs> yeah, and he's been there for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, I think right now Debo's fair. I mean, dude, that that, that catch he made, catch yeah, I mean, it's... I guess the. the Daggum, that's sick. <laughs> I still get excited watching Debo, you know, just as much as we did when he was playing for us. It was like, man, yeah, yeah look at that. Just that. You used to have that. <laughs> no that doubt. Spe- speaking here. of Spartanburg, you know, that kid was a Spartanburg uh, Spartanburg County kid at Chapman mm-hmm. High School in Edmond. Uh, so happy happy for the 864 Gamecocks from Sparkleburg, right? Yes, um, sir. So, so that's the deal there. He's a, he's a really good player. 
Uh, Chicken1515 says, Boomer Sooner. Um, I saw one Model 2 where, uh, and by the way, that, that graphic uh, has been sent in to us, Phil. It's in the... It's in the oh, did we get from it? Jane, from James Churchill. Churchill's English Pub Club. You remember that? Oh, yeah. yes. <laughs> Churchill's and then, now that's a Greenville. For sure, yeah. Ch- Churchill's a English Pub in Greenville, yeah. Mm-hmm. Woo. Let's see if we can get, we can get some fish and chips and a nice here. point there. <laughs> yeah, here we are. Chips. Here we are. Put us in it. Oh, it's not here. Nah. Yeah, there we go. Here. I don't know. Well, zoom in. Can I zoom in? Yeah, I think so. It's got it's got Carolina's downloaded. got Kentucky, Georgia, and Florida. Tennessee would have Vandy, Kentucky, and Bama. I bet that's what Tennessee's angling for if they're three because if they're gonna if they're like we have to play bama we want to play kentucky and vanderbilt right <laughs> just something. Right. yeah we got the email james we got it up there chicken 1550 says love the fighting beamers i guess you're i guess he's an oklahoma fan well we like oklahoma around here yeah um, no, i did no, see no, one no. model for the schedule was uh, one time that it did have south carolina and oklahoma as permanent opponents uh, I guess I had uh, Kentucky. They didn't have Georgia. It was Kentucky, Missouri, Kentucky, Vanderbilt, and Oklahoma. Hmm. Um, I don't know. Hey, I, I, I'd take that. <laughs> if yeah. I'm the game guys, I'd take it. On a, in, you know, every year. I mean, it, they go all the way across the country to Texas A&M anyway. You know, uh, right now I would take Texas. Now, eventually. They'll get it back together. <laughs> but I'd take Texas right now in a heartbeat. Uh, yeah. Dos Mandidos asked a question. He's like, how many stars did Debo have out of high school? I ranked him four, man, and I'm not trying to – He and he ended up better than better than I thought he would. I mean, I, I, didn't, I, I expected him to be a really good receiver at South Carolina. I didn't expect him to be a guy that, had he not gotten hurt, would, would, have, would have been in the Heisman discussion. Yeah. Because uh, that's exactly in 2017. You look at the way he started off, and then unfortunately had the injury. Um, wow! I mean, he was one of the best players in the country. Look at him, what he's doing in the NFL. He's one of the best players in the NFL. Um, so I bumped him up. Gosh, and it was the last year. I, it was the last year really I did rankings class of class of 2014, I think. Uh, so I bumped him up at Shrine Bowl because Carolina had a kid named Sha- Shaq Goodwin. Shaq, uh, eh, Shaq. Check somebody from Gaffney. Never played uh, all that well. Um, and he was more the guy that got the attention, you know, and then Debo kind of was a late riser. Spurrier Jr. didn't offer him till late. Uh, he almost went to North Carolina. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. That's back when he was known as Tyshun Samuel. Uh, it wasn't Shaq Rowland. It was the kid from Gaffney, and I can't remember his name. Can't remember. Class of 2014. I don't, I don't, uh, I'll look it up here in a second. But, um, yeah, so, uh, and then Spurrier Jr. liked him, and then he just was not healthy until the end of 2015, and then all of a sudden in the Clemson game that year, he catches a slant and takes it to the house, and you're like, wow, who's this guy? And then he, you know, hurt again the next year, then you know, continued to play through it. And, you know, uh, I didn't think he was going to be that good. Uh, I'll be honest with you there. But the thing about him is he's big and, and fast, and, you know, he's got that rare combination. Uh, of, of size and speed. Shaq Davidson, I'm sorry, from Gaffney. Oh. Um, and then, so, so see, Debo was in that class as well. Uh, the, the, let, check this out, rankings-wise. The bottom three ranked players in that class all had a direct hand in Carolina winning football games, like on the field. Taylor Stallworth, Debo Samuel, because the, the, uh, the composite drug him down. I mean, nobody else kind of caught the you know, took the bait on him, so to speak. Uh, Taylor Stallworth, really good player, stuck in the NFL a while. Uh, Devo Samuel. And then the final guy was, was the, the lowest rated guy in the class was Michael Skarnecchia, uh, who as a reserve won the Missouri game for the game. Yeah. So, Hey, how about that? You know, you know, your lower rated guys in your class uh, impacted your program. All right. We got to take a break. Jamie Bradford's coming up on the other side, uh, right here on the show on a Wednesday. We'll be back in, after these messages. Just as your State Farm agent combines good neighbor service with surprisingly great rates, you can combine your home, auto, life, or small business insurance with Tony Pope State Farm Insurance today. And guess what you'll get? 
That's right, even more good neighbor service with surprisingly great rates. In fact, Tony Pope State Farm is your go-to agent anywhere in South Carolina, North Carolina, or Georgia for the service you deserve at the price you want. So try combining your home, life, auto, and or small business insurance today. Tony Pope State Farm has been in business for more than 30 years and can handle anything you need in the tri-state area. Once again, Tony Pope State Farm will help you mix and match perfectly. Call 843-851-2222 or visit TonyPope.com today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. That one, easy. He's got a tire by the tail he has. He better hang on too. People have spoken. Nana's Porch was voted the third best food truck or trailer by the Charlotte newspaper Public Poll. Also, their pimento cheese mm, took third in a contest exclusively for products made in the state of North Carolina. I will let Noah Hall tell you about the rest. Nana's Porch, Southern Cuisine with an Uptown Twist. If you're in the upstate of South Carolina and are in need of residential real estate services, Cindy Bass Searfoss of Caldwell Banker Kane is for you. Ask her about the village at Creekside, all of her listings in my hometown of Spartanburg, South Carolina, right there on Daniel Morgan Avenue, married to a lifelong Gamecock fan. And many of our listeners have already bought homes from her and been 100% satisfied with the detail and care she uses. Cindy Searfoss, 864 864- 414-5271, Caldwell Banker Kane in the upstate for your real estate needs. This is Braylon Wimmer, South Carolina Gamecock Baseball, and you are listening to Inside the Gamecocks, the show with JC and Phil. Go Cox! And t- Welcome back, everybody, to Inside the Gamecocks, the show. It is presented to you by Express Sunrooms in Columbia. Give John Barber and his team a call to talk about potential enclosure for a patio or porch that you have, 803-446-4662. And we're joined now on the McKellar Enterprises guest line by JB, Jamie Bradford. How are you feeling this morning, sir? Well, I'd feel a lot better if I could get my hands on one of those Carolina Rise beanies JC's got on his head. I know. I keep I keep hearing that they're going to be sent some uh, our way, but yeah, we have yet to see the uh, check the mail every day. Receipts there. These are, these are choice, man. These are, they're very <laughs> sele- very they're very uh, hot sellers right now, and uh, mm-hmm. they're very selective uh, about uh, all that. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I had my Carolina beanie with the little ball on top went missing. And my cousin Alyssa was at my house it's probably a month ago, and she was wearing it. And I said, hey, that's mine. And she said, no, it's not. And I said, yes, it is. It's my beanie. <laughs> and she said, no, my mom gave it to me. I said, well, where did Christy, her mom? I said, where did Christy get it? She said, she said she found it. I said, yeah, that's mine. <laughs> Give me my she found it in my house. <laughs> so I, I need, I need, uh, I need, um, I need another beanie, JC. <laughs> I'll I'll see what I can do, guys. Bueller, do. <laughs> Bueller. I may get I can make it some inside the Gamecocks oh. the show beanies for us to have. But I mean, yeah, I mean, you guys don't have to wear beanies all year. I I, I wear them eight months out of the year. You guys, what, what, when do you wear a beanie? February, January. Now, well, it was like. It was like a degree on Christmas, so yeah. I slept in one. (laughs) (laughs) Oh gosh, yeah, yeah, that's 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 crazy. Sorry, everybody wants to know about Trey John Jeffcoat. Uh, I've given my latest. Uh, Like I said, I think they're still really trying, based on everything I tracked down yesterday about the subject. And I know, and like I said, I'm not going to get into details about specifics. Jamie, you and I spoke yesterday too about it. Uh, you know, my bottom line on this is I don't know if it's going to happen or not. Uh, I yeah. think that if it does not, whoever, and I'm not, I'm not going to call out anybody specifically because I, you know, you don't know who made the decision. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, if I do, I will. But um, whoever does make the decision, if they turn him down, I think it's, I think it's kind of sad and uh, not fair to the kid would be my thing and then i'd say that if you want a football player football player tiddlywinks player 
guitar player, whatever, you know, not, not, not just a player player, you know, uh, I'd say that. But uh, what say you about this situation uh, yeah. as far as uh, what you think? Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, the first thing I'm going to say is I'm going to plead to all of you if this doesn't work out, and I hope it does, and there's a sliver of hope that it does. Uh, I'm going to plead to everybody out there, if it doesn't work out, don't take to the message boards and start trashing Ray Tanner, because I assure you, it ain't Ray Tanner. Like, I'm telling you right now, it ain't him. Uh, So, you know, they're doing what they can, and um, it's kind of... I mean, it just is what it is. You know, there's, you know, there's, uh, you know, I think people can kind of speculate. The only reason I don't want to say anything, JC, is because it's something that nobody else has said, right? So, like, I, I get it. People are going to be frustrated. They should be. I understand totally uh, that, you know, why is everybody basically speaking in, in some silent language here? Just come out and say it. Well, I mean, it's not, you know, s- stuff kind of gets around sometimes. Like, it, it's almost like the commitment thing. Like, I don't want to ruin somebody's commitment. So, not going to get out there and speculate publicly on what I understand the situation to be, which is what you do, uh, JC. And so, um, you know, it's one of those things where I think we can all read between the lines and understand, you know, it's, it's not academic. And so there's obviously pretty much only one other thing it could essentially have to do with, which is an off the field issue. And, um, and they're, and they're trying to, to figure out how they can kind of get through that based on what some of the rules stay. Uh, in in this league and things like that, so they're they're working through it, and uh, certainly would be a huge pickup for Carolina. Um, my gosh, they need him. They need him bad. So we'll see what happens, and um, that's all we got until we until we get more. Yeah, that's that's that's, that's shoot. That's just about how that's how I see it there, Jay. Yeah, and this that so, and the other. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> this that and the other. Um. KFC says, who the heck is a football player from New York? And New York City, actually, I like New York City kids because uh, it's such a basketball place. Uh, there's been some good ones that, that have come out of New York City. Staten Island, yeah, the, the Bronx, uh, Harlem, you know, they, they, they don't – those schools don't have fields and stuff because land is so ridiculous. I mean, you, they all play at, what, a park or something. But uh, I've actually yeah. been to a high school football game in Brooklyn. Very interesting deal. Very interesting. I can only imagine. And fun, a lot mm-hmm. of fun. Um, uh, Wayne, we just talked about Jeff Co. Chicken 1515, who's a Sooner fan, who busted in here. Stars are cool, Correct. but they're not being developed. You look like Texas. Horn, horns down. <laughs> you do look like Texas. Hey, look. I'm done. I am done. Uh, I am completely done yeah. uh, defending Texas. And say, it, this is the year yeah. Texas is going to be back. <laughs> I mean, look. They, they, they've gone through Mac Brown. They've gone through, like, Mac Brown freaking – Charlie Strong, Tom Herman, and now Sark, and it's the same old, same team. Eight yeah. and five, Texas. Hook them horns. I feel bad. It's to the point I feel bad for Matthew McConaughey. Like, <laughs> like who feels that. bad for Matthew McConaughey? No, no right, I don't. All right, all right, all right. I, I do. I'm like, I watch him when he pull okay. for his team and he gets his heart broke, ripped out. Like, oh, man. You know. Yeah, uh, no, I don't feel bad for Matthew McConaughey at all. He can pick any w- w- any female in the world. He's worth a right. billion dollars. <laughs> He's got like a thirty pack of abs. I don't have that's, one. I don't have one how, ab. That's how sorry Texas football <laughs> is to me. It, it's like it's, Phil. How many <laughs> Phil? How many abs do you have? Do you have one ab like I do? Oh yeah, I mean you know just one nice you know kind of rounded. It's it's really <laughs> coming into form these days. <laughs> Me too. I'm sure hey, there's some there. real hard. <laughs> I'm sure I have some somewhere. I, mean, I have as many abs as I do asses. One. I have one ab. One. It's ab. like the uh, it's like the guy from uh, There's something about Mary. Six minute abs. Well, why can't they do five minute abs? No, it's six. No. It's six. Six. Yeah, right. <laughs> six. Six minute abs. I was looking at myself uh, the other day and thought I did catch one, but it's just a little bit of a sag and some shadow going yeah. on there. It's just I, like, know. Oh, never mind. I was yeah, I was searching around the other day and I do have them. They're just you know they're they were cold, so they're tucked into bed. That's right. They're well protected. You want a beanie for your abs now? (laughs) Six minute abs. Six Six minute abs. Saunders says, speaking of New York, his story on Dante Miller, I think he's going to try to come back. Yeah. Um, 
And, uh, so. and that's uh, and keep in mind, he's now, now Dante Miller is, uh, from I Col- mean, don't y'all mean little, little turbo, little turbo, little turbo. turbo. Uh, I think he's a pretty good player and, and keep in mind, Dante's not from New York. He's from, uh, the same place. Travian Robertson's from like Eastern North Carolina, the Laurenburg area. Yeah. Or maybe it may be. No, it's where Melvin Ingram's from Richmond, Rockingham, oh. uh, yeah. Rockingham. same, same area, us 74 corridor. Um, and uh, so, so he's kind of home, and uh, and he's smart, and uh, he's going to end up, um, you know, being able to study some stuff with graduate school here and, and do well with that. So I, I, I think it's more of an NCAA thing. Uh, John says one huge ab, lol. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, did Wu Tang commit? Who is Wu Tang? The Wu Tang Clan. What did Wu Tang? Wu Tang commit. Um, JD says, I bet Ancient Aliens has something to do with the whole Jeff Coat deal. <laughs> I know. Man, I, it's, man. Aliens. You know. <laughs> uh, that's crazy right there. Yeah. Aliens, man. Um, Big Watch says, seems like a USC admissions situation. They're trying to keep the outrage That's down. not true. Yeah, That's not. And, I, and look. Because yeah, they, they don't really hide that down there. They get all proud about themselves. You know, it's like, no, we're not yeah. letting him in because he isn't worth, you know. Yeah, yeah that kid's too yeah. dumb. Yeah, get in here, dumb kid can't get in South Carolina. No, it's not. It's yeah, not. Yeah. A, it, in, in all it's seriousness, a, big, it's not an admissions issue. No, it's it's, it's not. And if it was, it's an off the field. An off the field I would be the. I would be carrying the torch. You know, for you know, Absolutely. outrage. On yeah, that, the narrative one here would be a lot different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yep. So I, I think that that's uh, that's the one of those things. Uh, Big Watch says I know a five star kid that's leaning to Texas, and I could get to come to Carolina, but I don't think we've offered. I don't want to put my hands in the situation. Well, if you can get him, buddy, you let us know, and we'll make sure Shane on. throws out an offer if he's that good. We can, I can get you in touch if there's a with five the star right kid. People. If there's a five star kid leaning to Texas and, and you can get him to come here, Big Wash, I've got a direct line to Shane. I promise you, we'll make sure that he's offered if he's that make good. It <laughs> make it happen, Big Wash. We'll rock and roll. <laughs> you go for it, man. We'll uh, you reach out. We'll follow up. We'll get this deal done. Uh, Car- Craig Carolina says, says all the way. Yeah, we yeah. There's ways to get things done now. You know. Yeah. Craiger says Wu Tang's from Staten Island. That one went right over JC's head, and it did. And I'll admit it. Every time I think of Staten Island today, I think of that Pete Davidson character and his movie. Yeah, it seemed like a, just ridiculous. And I don't yeah. know. Maybe that was, that was actually a good movie though, and I don't care for him a whole lot. But he was really good in that movie. That's Perhaps Mayor of Staten Island. I yeah, think. Mayor of Staten Island. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I don't know. Staten Island. I got on the ferry one time and went over and saw the stats, went back, you know, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Big Watch says, LOL. So, yeah, we got that here. Well, uh, last night, basketball team, I mean, I don't know. <sighs> uh, it seemed to they, – they, they seemed to almost come out a little flat, and then uh, I think Ole Miss controlled the game start to finish. I think they should just play every game in Rupp Arena from here on out. I was going to say, yeah, they just the need road, to play away. I mean, yeah, they don't yeah. – <laughs> I don't I mean, think we need to play just, another home game. Terrible, you know, not a good shooting night. More like a discombobulated mess. I mean, they didn't get – I mean, at least they didn't lose by 40-plus. But they still lost to a team that, you Horrible. know, is one of the bottom ones in the league. So, I, I don't know what to think about that. I, you think I, the Irmo uh, Gymnasium could hold all 40 fans that show up to these games? <laughs> Oh yeah, and it, it's it's ugly. I mean, it, it's it's more ugly than at any time. Uh, Frank was uh, Frank was here, so uh, long way to go to get that thing built back up. Um, and uh, and we'll just see. Uh, I did I did we have a question earlier on the chat box, Jamie, and I'll get your initial take on this. And and Phil, actually, I'm, I'll ask you this when we get back. Phil, let's hit a break. All right, and then uh, we'll be back. So it'll be a nice kind of segue into. Uh, what we're going to talk about next right here on the show. Hey man, are you sick and tired of your business computer guy? Yes. He takes forever to call me back and doesn't always respond to the requests. Yeah. Same here. I'm paying him good money. I constantly have issues and I'm worried he's not backing up my network and securing it properly. 
Oh, I feel that, man. My head hurts, but I have a good lead on a good idea. I'm calling your boy Matthew Odom today from Heritage Digital. Heritage Digital is an IT firm that specializes in making sure your IT network runs like a dream. If you have one or 500 employees, it doesn't matter. They do it all for one monthly fee and have clients from South Carolina all the way to California. Yeah, I heard that monthly fee's low too, so I don't know why I didn't even think of that. Uh, Do you have 843-699? 1001 is Matt's contact number. Yeah, man, I sure do that. Or you can go to heritagedigital.com. Man, I hear they do a no cost assessment. Boy, this will help me. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> I'm getting on that and encouraging everyone else to do the same. Heritage Digital, 843 699 1001 or heritagedigital.com, a proud sponsor of Inside the Gamecocks, the show. You can't handle the truth. Gamecock Nation, do you need a place to stay for the big game? Many hotel booking engines keep all the commissions, but at Fan Plans, you support inside the Gamecocks, still earn your hotel loyalty points, and you receive an email with direct confirmation from the hotel. Whether you are visiting Columbia to cheer on Carolina or hitting the road to follow the team, get in the stands with Fan Plans. Yep, time to get back to the show. Shoot. All right, my man. Welcome back to the show, everybody. Presented to you by Express Sunrooms in Columbia. Give John Barber a call, 803-446-4662, to discuss a potential backyard retreat for your home or a sunroom addition just in time for the warm weather to be right around the corner here. JC, what were you what were you wanting to hit up here after this break? I did, yeah, I did want to talk to you. Uh, I did want to say congratulations to Ryan Bethay. Uh, our photographer at TheBigSpur.com yeah. also covers women's basketball for us. He's had a baby girl, oh. he and his wife. So, congrats. I'm sitting there looking at a picture of her on, on Facebook or on uh, Twitter here. She's gorgeous. Wonderful. So, con- congratulations to Ryan. So, so we, we've got our first baseball question in a while today, uh, okay. Jamie. And uh, we, we, we're probably going to dig in and preview the season quite a bit here in the coming weeks. But, uh, you know, I. I what I've gotten from Whittle and kind of just looking at it on paper, it does seem like the pitching, uh, the pitching may, uh, you know, is probably setting up to be pretty doggone strong again this year. Uh, question, you know, the question is obviously going to become, can they score runs? Um, what is your take on it? And what do you think we're going to see? Just kind of your 10,000 foot uh, view is, is, you know, baseball is right around the road, uh, right, right around the corner, you know, right down the road here uh, pretty soon. And, uh, Everybody's obviously going to be excited for a little while. So, uh, your yeah. thoughts on on the uh, on this year's Mark Kingston baseball team? Well, I mean, unfortunately, first of all, we're back to the old days of Gamecock athletics, where you you hated when football season ended, and then you wanted to fast forward to baseball season. Uh, we're kind of in that lull once again, when the basketball program just doesn't give you a lot to cheer about, and it's it's sad, but it is what it is. Um, so. Yeah, look, I you know, with baseball, I think one of the things that we always need to be careful about, I mean, I'm a baseball guy, so so I am, but but uh, people get really excited and there is uh there is so much, so much that can change between now and opening day. We're we're talking about it. We're a month away from opening day. And the most important thing between now and then is one word. Healthy. Be healthy. Mm-hmm. Be as healthy as you can uh, to get into the season. You know, don't don't do anything don't do anything ridiculous over the next four weeks uh, to kind of screw that up. And then you know, you'll oftentimes, guys, you'll 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 hear about dudes. You got the the fall is a little bit different uh, from the spring. You know, and and how kids work, how pitchers pitch, how hitters kind of a, a approach what they're doing. They're working on things is what it is. Now they're preparing for the season. And there's a big difference in those two, right? So, um, you know, you, you'll see some guys and what they do in the fall, and then you'll kind of turn around in the in the early spring workouts, and and it might be a little bit different. With that said, uh, they they have arms, they have arms, and um, I think what's gonna what it's really gonna come down to there are two things: one, uh, staying healthy, and then two, finding a setup guy and finding a closer. Because, you know, if you go back, I was just texting right before the show with, with my dear friend. Uh, every, it should be everybody's dear friend, one of the best people on the planet, Drew Meyer. 
And, you know, if you go back to his era and then you fast forward through when they, you know, when they won the national championships and, and all the, <laughs> the truly great years, the, the years in which they went to Omaha just in the last 25 years, you could go back previously beyond that as well. But if you just start in the last 25 years, the best programs in Gamecock baseball history have a setup man and they have a closer. Uh, and and so you, you got to find it. I mean, you got to find it. And, and you really, you know, you really don't want to be, you know, getting necessarily, you know, into the middle of SEC play before you do. Like you want to have that guy ready to go before you get into conference play. So um, that's those are kind of my question marks. I know that they have guys that they think are probably maybe going to fill those roles, but that, that stuff can change. So we'll kind of see how it all works out there. Um, and then offensively, uh, you know, when you bring Monty back into the mix, you know, you're, you're talking about hopefully an offense here that can, that can beat you in multiple ways. You know, the one-dimensional offensive system doesn't does not work in this league. You can play gorilla ball. Coach Tanner played it for a long time, right? We all, we all saw that. We saw, we saw a lot of home runs. But, but Coach Tanner also had guys who could bunt. You know, Coach Tanner had guys who could hit and run. Coach Tanner had guys who knew how to move runners. But then he also had guys who he would literally, and I'm telling you, he would look at down the bench and say, all right, I need you to go in there and hit a home run. <laughs> he did, he'd tell people that. Like, you know, if your kid's 10 years old and he's playing baseball now, don't tell him to walk up to the plate and hit a home run. All right? You're going to ruin that kid. Don't do it. But Coach Tanner would prepare you because you knew, like, that was kind of your role. Um, so hopefully there are guys with multiple roles where they can beat you in multiple ways, and, and, these, and these kids just become really good at whatever their, their best craft is. Uh, so we'll kind of see what, what happens there, and – I think defensively they're going to be pretty good. Um, you know, Braylon Wimmer is going to be the shortstop. He had an unbelievable fall. He's he's probably the leader of the team, him and Will Sanders. Um, you know, the, the corners are questionable right now as far as what they're going to get out of them. You know, offensively, you could probably see um, Braswell start at third, and and that would be really good. And offensively, if he can keep it going, um, he's, he's going to be a big help. they got to get healthy at first. We'll see what happens there. Interested to see what happens behind the plate. And then if they're healthy in the outfield, they're going to be good. The middle infield should be fine. So um, I think that this is a uh, this is a year that has a chance. And they've got a lot of teams early on, if you've looked at the schedule, that they should beat. Honestly, they should beat. Like, th their first 18 games, guys, they, they should win a lot of baseball games. Uh, and if they do that, that can create some confidence. And then you get into conference play. It's the best league in the country. There's nine in the preseason top 25. And Carolina's the ninth one. Uh, but they are in the preseason top 25. So you find yourself at 15 and 15 at the end of the season in this league, you've had a hell of a year and you had a chance at Omaha. It's not going to get any easier either with Texas and Oklahoma coming in because uh, as, as, uh, as much as I think football will have to go through a transition at both places once they come into the league, um, which, which, look, honestly, A&M and Missouri handled the transition fine. Uh, mm -hmm. In baseball, you're just adding – you're basically it's basically going to be like every good team in the country's in the SEC. <laughs> yeah, well, and and I mean, you know what? Ha, ha, but a hat tip too to the AC, the ACC is really good. They and are. They, they, they have absolutely. seven teams in the top twenty five. They should. Um, but Clemson isn't one of them. Mm. Not right now. We'll see. Though. We'll see. I, I think Clemson actually made a pretty good hire. Uh, they did. Eric baseball. Package is I mean, good. Yeah. He's very good. I mean, you don't yeah. take Michigan cold weather school to, to a national championship series and not, not know yeah. how to coach. Yeah. Um, so, so swing back to basketball a little bit. Uh, Jay Diss says Mike Morgan said Lamont Paris told him, and Mike did say this on the air yesterday that they might not have worked the portal hard enough. Uh, the, the M Smith guy that was with him Smith from uh, Chattanooga. That's at Gonzaga. Now doesn't even start for the Zags gets half the minutes he got last year playing for Paris which I thought was interesting as well. I thought that that was an NIL situation, but um, I don't know. I, you know, in basketball, can can you – I suppose you can. I, I think it would be kind of difficult uh, to put something together from the portal given – I mean, you have to really know what you're doing and really know who to get. Uh, so, so I don't know. I thought that was an interesting comment because I, I thought this press conference – uh, Paris said that he did like to hit the portal. He did like that style of recruiting and all that. Uh, maybe it was just people. I mean, I don't know. Maybe there just weren't a whole lot of guys available, uh, or that were interested. Uh, who knows? But uh, 
I did think that was interesting that, that there's an admission around there that it uh, obviously there's a talent issue. Uh, obviously, they need more players. Um, so your thoughts on that? Can, can you think we could see Lamont Paris hit the portal hard and, and change the fortunes here in the next uh, year or so? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I hope. I mean, um, you know, honestly, I do like the young guys, right? I think we uh, – well, I mean, what do I know? I mean, I'm not a basketball scout, but just based on the, br- the, the brief moments I've seen them, you know, seem to like their talent. Frank liked them. Um, you know, Lamont, you, you can kind of hear it in their voices when they talk about them. They're pretty good players. Um, I, I, you know, I, I, I don't really know what to think because I, I'm always very forgiving in year one of anything uh, ever. It is really hard to coach. It is really hard to coach in this climate. And, and now it's really hard to coach in this league. Okay, so, you know, I, I just – I really – think it's only fair to coach Paris and that program to reserve judgment until we you know really give this thing some time I mean you know with that said to be fair to the conversation when you look around the league there are a lot of there are a lot of programs that seemingly have turned around fairly quickly um I mean I mean guys we you know Alabama and, and Auburn aren't basketball juggernaut schools but they sure are pretty good at basketball you know uh regardless of what just happened down there that awful situation in tuscaloosa holy smokes um but um Mm. you know so you see that you look around the league and you see those things and of course it wasn't that long ago that south carolina was that they went to the final four in 2017 um but then you you look at your program now with you know best freshman in the country and you bring in this kid who's like LeBron James's nephew, and you, you know you like to think that you'd be better than you are, and you, and you're really not good at all. Um, so I'd like to hold judgment on it. With that said, I mean, look, the limited knowledge that I have in basketball, guys, I can sit here and talk baseball with you all day and football and things like that, <laughs> and we we can do basketball too. But I, I I don't I have leaned on the basketball people that I know to make sure that w- the things that I say are somewhere in the ballpark okay so i want to be fair i don't like their style of basketball it just there's nothing that that shows that this team is connected in any way shape or form on the court or off of it you know and i might be dead wrong but like you know you just kind of run into the paint and kind of look around oh nobody's open i'll just try to shoot it oh that ball got swatted into the fifth row that's that's kind of a lot of their offense it's kind of it's kind of strange and then you watch some of these like mid majors, like the Colorado States of the world, or the you know the Furmans or whomever, less talented kids. Uh, you know, most of them are a little bit older. You know, they go there and they kind of stick around for for a little while. But you, you Chris Ball movement, everybody's kind of on the same page. Your feet are always moving. You're drawing fouls. You're in. You're out. I mean, it's it just looks like a crisp brand of basketball compared to what we play, and and that's what's been a little bit disheartening. But Again, it's year one, and you don't know the rhyme or reason for the things that happen on the floor. And um, so, you know, certainly in my mind, we're going to give them a pass here, but it is really difficult to watch, and it's very, very disheartening. This team was only two wins from the tournament last year, and now they're not even in they, – if this tournament was 300 teams, they wouldn't be in it. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm with you there. I mean, that sums really it up pretty well. It was like, because ball movement's one thing I do notice, and it's just like it's not. I haven't, yeah. It, it's I mean, just not there. I mean, it's just not there. It, it, yeah. And it's interesting, like, when they win, it's fun, because it's like they're all over the place. It's moving around, and then, you know, but it, these past few games have just been <laughs> just nightmares. Well, I mean, look, I, I, I said I said right here and looked at y'all last Wednesday uh, after they beat Kentucky, and I said, hey, look, if you actually look at the next few games, look at the recent success they've had over a couple of these, actually most of these teams, and, you know, look at how these teams are playing. You know, there's an opportunity there. You can go out mm-hmm. and win two or three of these ball games, which, by the way, they still can, but based on the last two games, they're, they're not going to win any. But, I mean, um, but math, 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 mathematically they can't. But, I mean, um, you know, you, you looked at it and you thought, okay, well, look, you know, maybe they got some confidence in Lexington. Yeah, you win a couple games, you never know what can happen. I and mean, this, is, this isn't a team that's going to the postseason. This is a team that's supposedly building for the future. That's why you fired your last coach. You've been here forever in lieu of a new guy. 
Okay, so so you 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 want to, uh, uh, Phil, JC. I mean, I'm asking this question to you and everybody else that's in this chat room. Okay, when you have a new coach in any sport, it is it valuable to you if you are watching them play. Is it is it a valuable? Is it valuable to you in, in, in how you're judging and determining their success to see if they get better as the season goes on in the first year? Like, is that a, is that a valuable judgment of a first-year coach? Like, look, there's going to be baseball, football, basketball, whatever it is. It's, it sometimes it takes a while to figure things out. We all got to get used to each other. We got a lot of transfers. We got this, that, and the other. Okay. But as the year goes on, you're, you're, you've all been together every day for a while. So, like, you you know, if you have enough talent, you should generally start to get a little better. Isn't that fair to, to judge this program? Are they going to get better as the year goes along? Is that fair? I, I, uh, I said, well, see, they started off with that win over the first-place team in the ACC <laughs> yeah. right now. You know? Well, I mean, what, so, I mean what, I'm, what I'm saying here is, have they gotten any better? I don't, well, that's the I, what remains to be seen, right? right. Uh, they go I mean, up and down. Tell? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, they that's, go up and down. Right. I mean, like that's you right. sit there and you, you kind of look at the last five games. You look at Western Kentucky, Eastern Michigan, uh, Vanderbilt. They lost on the road. They really could have won that game uh, up in a tough place to play. You get blown out by Tennessee, but then you win at Kentucky. So that's a five-game stretch where they were showing signs of life. And then you have back-to-back -back home games, and they just look lifeless. Well, I mean, in the loss, I don't, I don't like the style of basketball either. It's rough. No, it's tough and watch. that's that's my point. Like I, I'm saying, like I think it's fair to give a guy a couple of years to get things going, especially to withhold judgment in year one. But I always look to see, regardless of the win and loss column, I'm not talking about wins and losses. I'm talking about the way that the team plays. Do they get better as the year goes along? Okay, wins and losses will come, but you need more talent. I, I get all that. Are you getting better or not? And I. I I mean, I, I would I would ask somebody else, but I mean, in my eyes, you know, it doesn't seem that they are. So I, I just, you know, there's a lot of questions, and hopefully they'll find an answer or a hundred soon. That's right. Yeah. Because it's just it's just like inconsistency. That's the only thing that's getting better as the season yeah. progresses. Here is how inconsistent this team has been. <laughs> Yeah, that's I, not what. To, that's not the look you want. <laughs> to answer your overall question, though, I I, I would say yes, uh, Jamie, because um, you know Eddie Fogler had a couple of really rough teams first two years, right? Yeah, they, uh, and yeah, of course, building building a program back then was different than it is now. But uh, I, if I'm not mistaken, he beat Kentucky late one year with Emmett Hall and those guys. Um, yeah. Well, and, and look, that was, that, I, and that I, was a boost. And yeah. I was about to say, JC, look, Lou Holtz went 0 11 in his first year at South Carolina. He, yeah. Here's the difference in this conversation, though. Eddie Fogler and Lou Holtz had quite the track history of success with major programs before mm -hmm. they came to the University of South Carolina. You know, for those that are questioning Lamont Paris, I can't tell them that they're wrong for doing that because although Lamont has been fairly successful at ETSU, he hasn't proven anything at this level. And so, you know, I think we all understand that, that criticism at this point in time is fair. I'm okay. Oh, with yeah, that. definitely. Definitely. My boy Jan Bennett, getting back to baseball, did say the Jan's beer tree. Dude. The beer tree is going to be uh, stronger this year um, uh, with uh, the limbs. Uh, they have filled out nicely. Uh, Jan goes to these games and he tailgates and he, he, he makes a beer tree at the baseball game. So we love that. Yeah, <laughs> but I yeah you're right. Jan invited me over last year. I think it was last year and I never. I don't know why I couldn't go. We were, I was with Drew Myers, as a matter of fact. I'm not sure why we didn't walk over there, but we didn't. So I owe Jan a uh, an appearance next time he invites me. Yeah, no doubt. Ryan mentions on basketball to basketball, we can't handle the press. Teams are meeting this half quarter. So, yeah, good defensive teams, teams that play defense. And I, I, I'm sure Kentucky can play defense. I don't think they did. Uh, Vanderbilt certainly not a very strong defense. But, then, man, you run into, like, Buzz Williams, Kermit Davis, and Rick Barnes. Yeah, Those well, guys are gonna, yeah. they're going to D you up. I mean, they're going to make make their kids play defense. Yeah, they did. <laughs> they, they don't handle it. They don't handle it well at all. So, 
Uh, which makes the win over Clemson even more su- surprising because Clemson, Brad's teams play good defense, you know. It, yeah, I, I mean, you know, it, <laughs> it's just amazing. They, that, uh, may be yeah, the, yeah. that may be one of the biggest upsets in the basketball series history when all is said and done. Yeah, uh, I, I think bad, Clemson yeah. won. Clemson won the ACC with Eldon Campbell, Dale Davis, those guys in eighty. Is either 80, like 90, 1990, I think. They won it in 90. George Felton, it was his second to last year. That Carolina team had a lot of injuries. They were 14 and 14. Back then, Carolina and Clemson played twice every year. Uh, and so they came to Columbia at the end, and the Gamecocks upset them 54-53. Looking at where they are now and where Carolina is as a team, and looking back on that game in November, that may be one of the biggest upsets in the, in the history, like, like bigger than – if uh, one of those Clemson teams knocked off McGuire back in the day. I mean, that that's uh, when you kind of look at where they are and where Carolina is right now. Yeah. So yeah. it's very interesting. All right, going to take our final break here. JB with his hour on Wednesday, each and every Wednesday right here on Inside the Game Cuts, the show. We'll be back after these messages. If you're looking to sell or buy multifamily property right here in South Carolina, the Burgesson team of REMAX at the Lake can help you get to closing fast and easy. Adam and Derek Burgesson both are very proud Gamecocks and are more than happy to assist you with any of your commercial real estate needs all across the state. You can email Adam at aburgesson at REMAX.net. That's A-B-E-R-G-E-S-O-N at REMAX.net to get your next deal underway. The Burgesson team, proud sponsors of Inside the Gamecocks. I love the smell of napalm in the morning. What's up, Gamecock fans? This is Pitcher Noah Hall. If you want some delicious food for your event, I suggest visiting nanasports.com today to find out what they all have to offer. It's really good southern cuisine based out of Charlotte, my hometown. I hope you guys go check it out. Go Cox and go Nanas. I've been expecting you, Mr. Powers. Sometime in the near future, there's a good chance I'll move back to my home area of the upstate of South Carolina. And I'm going to tell you right now, there's nobody I would use to help me find a new home except Cindy Bass Searfoss of Caldwell Banker Kane, located in my hometown of Spartanburg, Daniel Morgan Avenue, married to a diehard Gamecock. 864-414-5271. Give Cindy a call. 864-414-5271. A proud sponsor of Inside the Gamecocks, the show. Family vacations, a new car, a new boat, all cost money, but you don't necessarily have to make more to afford any of that if you can save cash that's flying out the window now. iHelp Consulting can help you finally get the kids to Disney World, upgrade the minivan, or drop that new boat in the water next summer. Let Daniel and iHelp Consulting consult with you. No fees, just savings. You pay them a percentage of those savings. Save on essential services, credit card fees, you name it. Let them find it. These folks are incredible. iHelpConsulting.com. How can I help you? Hey, Mo Kaba here from the Carolina Gamecocks. You're listening to Inside the Gamecocks, the show with JC and Phil. Welcome back to the show, everybody. Inside the Gamecocks, the show presented to you by Express Sim Rooms in Columbia. Give John Barber a call, 803-446-4662, or... Send an email and reach out at johnb at expresssunrooms.com. Set up a no-obligation consultation about some potential additions or a backyard retreat for your home. And, of course, we're back. McKellar Enterprises guest line with JB, as always. Actually, I actually might do that because we've got a... Call John? Yeah, we have a porch that I would like to soup up, so to speak. Soup it up. They can do it, man. Yeah. Like put a big soup bowl in the middle? No, I'm just kidding. I like seriously we <laughs> but it can I be have done. A, yeah, I, I we I might uh, have him come and just give us a quote so we know you know let's see, if we just pull the kids out of school, sell a car and a kidney. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Not that he's expensive. Oh, That's not what I'm talking about. I mean, every time no, we yeah. turn around, we we have a bill. I'm like, where do, where do these things yeah. come from? Like, yeah, oh, this is getting, it comes everywhere, right? You know. Everywhere. Yeah, I'm at the point now where I want to weld my mailbox shut. <laughs> by, by the way, those of you that are members of Carolina Rise, we just uh, the new we, we redesigned our website. It needed it. 
Uh, and it looks good. So go check it out, www.carolinarise.com. You can buy one of these beanies. And uh, all right. the profit, profit from the beanie goes to help players. So yeah, you guys know all that right now. But, yeah, um, Jan says always cold beers. Man, yeah, Jan is one of the greatest human beings on earth to have cold beers with before a game, by the way, because he just absolutely just has a blast and loves mm-hmm. talking ball and had a great time hanging with him and my friend Margo and my friend Jason uh, all, in, uh, all in Lexington this year before the, the, the Kentucky game. Uh, JB points out, too, on the chat box, J-B-J-A-Y underscore B-E-E. Besides Michi and Gigi, there's not pure talent on this team. When those two go MIA, it's a wrap. Why is Bosman Verdonk even playing? Well, I can't answer that last question, but to your point about Michi and Gigi, you're right. I mean, they were, like, 7 of 30 from the floor last night. I mean, so if your two best players don't score, you don't win. And they scored at Kentucky, and they won. Yeah. Yeah. Michi Johnson went completely off. It's a simple um, game. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a simple game. Yeah, the play to win the game, Phil. That's right. Ball goes, ball goes, ball in. goes in hoop. <laughs> yeah. You win yeah. the game. Um you know, you shoot the ball, it uh, goes in the hoop. You, you you know, you play to win. It's you know, at the end of the day. Uh, seventy six says J C does your app reflect the website, JC. We don't have an app right now for Carolina Rise. Uh it's possible we will at some point. I have to figure out what sort of functionality uh, I want to have on it. I mean, do we have an app where you could just click on a something and send the player some – put 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 money toward a player? I don't know. I don't know how we do that with Carolina Rise. But uh, I can see us having an app for the show pretty soon. Pretty soon here in the near future. Probably, you know, maybe quarter two, quarter three of this year. Uh, something like that. Um, yeah, basketball team, no talent. I think that's it. You know, the football team uh, – is in the process of acquiring talent. And we, we've talked about Jeff Cope, but oh. then, you know, there's other guys out there um, that they're recruiting. And uh, sort of some of the focus has been on this kid uh, from Memphis, uh, yeah. Eddie Eddie Smith. Is that it? Phil? Is it Eddie Smith? Eddie Lewis. Eddie. Eddie, Eddie. Lewis. That's right. Millie Lewis, Eddie Lewis. Uh, Eddie Lewis. Gold, uh, gold origi- jacket, green jacket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Originally. <laughs> Originally from Harlem, New York, spent some time at JUCO, spent some time at Rutgers, and ultimately Memphis had a pretty good year last year, 42 receptions, also returns punts. Uh, I watched this guy's film, guys, and I think if I get his last name right, quit calling him Eddie Smith or Eddie Griffin. <laughs> uh, I mean, yes. Yeah. That's Cat my Steve. favorite. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> call, yeah, call it whatever. But uh, it, it – it, um, this guy is uh he's fast, he's got good arm hands, he's not he's not tiny, he's about five of eleven, one ninety two, so good size about him. I mean, uh, what do you guys think? I mean, I, I think that this is a, a player that can come in and help uh add some more pieces to that receiving room, which uh you know, I, you got Juice, you got Xavier Leggett, you got Amarian Brown uh coming back as proven guys. They like the young guys. You got a bunch of tight ends now, some of those guys can slide over. Uh, but, but you kind of feel better if, if they would add like one or two more pieces uh, at receiver just to, to ward against injury and and all that good stuff. What, what, what say you guys? Yeah, I mean, look, I he's a pretty good player. I mean, now that I've I had, I had seen him play, I knew when I heard the name, I was like, I've seen that guy before. Um, Eddie Lewis. You know, watch a lot of college football, and of course, they've seen Memphis. Uh, he's he's a pretty good player, and he's a kid, he's a kid who. Come in and play. There's no doubt. Hey, by the way, is there any new any new update um, on the uh, the running back from Mississippi State? Have you heard anything? I haven't heard a word. I heard uh, so that's another one that's kind of like in progress. Uh, last night, I uh, I heard you know, Carolina felt a little bit better about it. Okay. Than maybe they once did. Uh, okay. Maybe an uh, NIL it, situation here. It, it was an, it, that's involved, but but also JB, I heard. Uh, I was told earlier that it's like, um, you know, it, it may be a more traditional recruitment thing where, where you know, he's uh, maybe because Carolina didn't jump on him right when he hit the portal, you know, that he wants to make sure they want him, and believe me, they do. Yeah. Um, and, and all this stuff. <laughs> I mean, th- this this kid's from Greenville, Greenville, Mississippi, which is yeah. Uh, yeah. in the Delta over there. And, uh, you know, Seattle's a long way to go from there 
Uh, yeah. And so, yeah. Uh, I think Carolina could probably pull it off if, if the the NIL deal, if they, if they can get close on, on the NIL deal, I think. And, and look, you know, you bring him in, and all of a sudden you look at running back, and th- there's going to be a competition between – Dylan Johnson, who was Mississippi State's leading receiver, I think he was one of the better players in the league last year as far as total offense goes. He can catch the ball, too. Obviously, in that system, uh, he caught a lot of passes. Uh, and then you got Lavoisier Carroll, who I think it's important for him to have uh, a really good offseason and, and start to come on, uh, pick up more of the mental aspects of the game, all that. And then the kid from Stratford, uh, Henderson. Yep. Um, and, you Anderson. Know, I, I th- Anderson. God almighty. I knew I was going to make that mistake. Uh, yeah. Mario Anderson Jr. Uh, and so that's a nice three-man competition because if Mario Anderson Jr. beats out Dylan Johnson, who's an mm-hmm. SEC starter, that means Mario's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then if Lavoisier overcomes those guys, that means that guy's pretty good. And then you still have Juju McDowell back there who will always play his role. Um, we mentioned Dante Miller coming back. And, and I think if you get Dylan Johnson, you start to kind of feel like, well, at least you've got somebody that's proven there if these other guys don't work out, you know, the younger guys or, or, or the guy from Newberry or whatever. So, you know, I, I think, I think he's almost a, an under the radar important recruit for this program right now. Yeah. You know, Denny McDaniel, the head coach at Stratford told me that, um, you know, not only is Anderson powerful and fast, but he's a leader. And he said, he'll probably go in there and be, end up being one of the hardest workers on the team. Uh, he said, he'll call you out in a hurry. Uh, you know those type of things. Now let me let me pr- let me also add to this because most people they hear a head coach say something about a player. It's very rare ever, right? That um, you hear a head coach go, "Yeah, he ain't very good." <laughs> you know that doesn't happen. Okay, I understand that. Can't play. I, I I will I will add this. I, I've known Denny for twenty four years. Uh, if Denny if Denny didn't think he would fit in at Carolina, he would have told me. Um, he would have, he would have, he would have said, and I wouldn't have anything to say. I would have just, I wouldn't even tell you that I talked to him. Um, so, you know, he said, no, no. He said, I, I think it'll take him some time to adjust to the speed of the game, but I think he's a kid who once it, the season gets here, he'll, he'll be ready to go. And I think he'll be, he'll be okay. So that's good, you know, and then, um, you know, the, if, the, if they pull the kid in, I mean, let's remind everybody too. And y'all, y'all are the best people to remind everybody because you talk about it every single day. Yes, kids are transferring and things like that right now. They're going to do this again at the end of spring practice. More players are going to leave programs and transfer. So, you know, if, if, you, if you throw your pen up against the wall or blast your computer screen, screen because you don't get the kid from Mississippi State, or oh, my God, we're not going to be able to run the football. Beamer screwed it up. It's time to fire him and, and hire, you know, Tom, Dick, and Harry. You know, we hear these guys all the time who freak out over every little thing. There's another period coming up, okay? number That's number one. Number two, you got a different leader on the offensive side of the football named Dow Loggins. And, and number three, you know, you've got spring practice, and I don't know if anybody else believes the same thing I do, but, you know, spring practice is the time for you to, you know, practice. That's where you see guys improve uh, and, and and figure things out. You know, they didn't bring Lavoisier Carroll in for nothing. He was not ready to play last year. Okay, he's got a ways to go. There's no doubt, but that's, that's what you do. You, you practice in the spring. That's why it's there. So, you know, they're going to be okay. They're going to be fine. You know, I, I, I'll i get worried in August if you get two of these guys who are down with an injury and you didn't bring anybody else in and you're going into the season with one running back. That's when I'm going to worry. Um, yeah. but, for, but for now – I'm not going to waste my time on it. You know, I think these guys are going to be okay, and there's a lot of moving parts. And our brains, guys, are all still connected into past the past version of college football, which mine is too mm. all the time. Oh, yeah. I, I'm still I'm still totally – that's how we grew up. That's all we – you know, that clock and calendar has been what we've lived by every year. So our brains are there. And then we have to come back and kind of mm. remind ourselves like, oh, yeah, like – it's always kind of moving, and we don't ever really actually know what's going on behind the scenes. Um, I think I think they're going to be okay. Yeah, I Jamie would imagine Bradford so. I mean, you know, show. there's no – yeah, I was just going to say there's no, you know, to follow up on that, no reason to kind of panic right now because you are – man, you brought it – just the mindset right now. we got to get out of that old school mindset and bring it around. 
uh, you know, and 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 bear in mind, you know, with that, hey, that guys can leave at that time too. But you know, it hasn't been the most stellar of portals from a player perspective this year. You know, from the availability standpoint, you know, huge names dropping in and out. I mean, you're seeing some high star guys, but it's all, you know, younger, more developmental types. So you just yeah. got to hope again that your eval, your evals are good enough to bring in the guys that are going to make an immediate impact for your team. And I think our yeah. coaching staff is going to do that. Hey, I talked to somebody last night about the the kid from yeah. Yale that they got in for the for the uh, offensive line. He's like, man, he's going to help Carolina bigly, big time. Bigly. Uh, next year, bigly. Uh, hey, quick, you know, quick it, note. Quick note. Let sure. me add something real, real quick to your, whatever you're about to say. Uh, sure. I've had I've had a couple of different people text me like, dude, this this center they brought in from Yale is 270 pounds. He can't play in this league. That is his weight from the profile when he was a High freshman. School. Yeah, like, he's, he played at 300 pounds this year. So it's, three three hundred three hundred five. Yeah, you look at him. That's his freshman picture right there. His, his high school. Uh, High school yeah. senior picture, right? You look yeah. at him now; he looks like like Matt Dillon from the, something about Mary with yeah. the, the the big old the must the big huge stash. I mean, he's scary looking almost. <laughs> I'd be scared of him. But um, uh, you know, yeah. Mary. Look, I, I think this class too. When, when you look at it, 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 South Carolina's recruiting class in general was, this year was going to be line of scrimmage heavy because they lose a lot. They lose an older guys, um, a lot of O line and D line. I think they knocked that out of the park. Uh, yep. Although in the portal, would I like to see them add an edge like a Trey John Jeffcoat? Yeah, if they can get Trey John Jeffcoat and Dylan Johnson uh, along with Eddie Lewis, um, that kind of rounds it off for me because I'm like, well, that's a that's an SEC starter at running back, an SEC starter at DN, uh, and a guy that's you know got a lot to prove. Um, probably chip on his shoulder from Harlem, New York, that had a really good season at Memphis last year. They can also, oh, by the way, you lost Josh Van, your punt returner. Um, Amari Brown certainly is qualified to do that job. I think we all saw that. But, uh, you know, this guy could probably give, give some competition there. So, uh, you know, I, 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 so I think that's good. But to your point, too, Jamie, I, I, I agree with you. Uh, the portal opens again here down the road. And th- that's the different mindset because it used to be, okay, so signing day comes and goes. Those are your guys. And if you lose some at the end, yeah. tough. You lose them. Uh, and then it's over. All right. Now it's it's never really over. <laughs> There's yeah. always a chance, you know, bring in somebody over the summer or whatever, even even right before the season starts in August. I mean, uh, Tavian Feaster came in, what, right before that, uh, the season started. Yeah. Okay. And, and at running back, you can get by with that. You can come in and. Not Marcus uh, Satterfield's system. Oh, well, no, well, nobody could do it. <laughs> it doesn't matter who you are. You could put uh, whoever uh, out there, and, and you couldn't do it. So hopefully this is a little bit easier, more easy to learn. And, and, and like you said, it's not over yet uh, as far as player acquisition uh, and all that. Ryan says he's looked at this. is a baseball question from Ryan from the Nan- award-winning Nanosports chat box. Mm. He's looked at two potential starting lineups for baseball, and Braswell's not in either. Is he hurt, or someone jumped him? Nah, I wouldn't. He's going. He'll play. Uh, he's look. If you can hit, you're going to play. And um, and he, you know, he swung it well in the fall. So, you know, there's the beginning of the year in in college baseball. You're going to see so many guys playing, and and they're going to use the first couple of weeks to figure to start figuring things out. They should be good enough to beat everybody they play. So, nah, he'll play. He'll play. Albert mentions in basketball, it's important to keep about how, keep in mind how many players left from last year's team. After exactly right. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a mass. Jermaine, did anybody see Jermaine Cousinard go off for Oregon? Yeah, did you yeah see, I read did you that, see yeah. Ke- <laughs> did you see Keyshawn Bryant fly that rocket to the moon and then land on top of the rim? <laughs> oh, my God. Phil, did you see him? He was eight know, feet in the I air. It. No, yeah. I read about uh, Cousinard, but I did not see the Bryant. <laughs> I'll have to he literally jumped over a guy. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah. I mean, from the base. Yeah, great... I mean, it was amazing. There's some things he did dunking the basketball and stuff at Carolina. You're probably not going to see for a while. You know, just uh, – and then he go, you know, miss a layup. <laughs> or uh, or yeah. dribble it off his foot or something, you know. It, yeah, we that do poor that guy. Now. 
Yeah, he right. Like Jordan, <laughs> plenty Michael of Jordan half the time, and uh, half the time like he like he didn't you know didn't know you had to dribble the ball you know, to get it up the court. But uh, yeah. certainly wish those guys the best. I mean, what happened with Frank and the trans? That wasn't their fault. And, you know, they they didn't want to be there. They should have transferred. You know that kind of thing. Um, yeah. Craig said he missed his share of dunks too. Yeah, Frank's last game it was a microcosm. Uh, because here goes Keyshawn Bright. Carolina's on a run. Keyshawn steals. I think goes down the court, misses the dunk. Yeah. Carolina never got back in the game. They lost to Mississippi True. State pretty badly. Uh, Connor asks, is Jeffco still in play last night? Until I'm told, absolutely no. Uh, and they move on. That's it. I'm just hesitant to put anything out because it's like a, it's like such a, like, like report something because it's such a fluid situation. Uh, and Hughes asks, what's the Jeff Coat situation? Basically, He's having trouble getting into getting into Carolina because of an, something that happened off the field in 2019, 2018, way back in the day at yeah. Missouri. Uh, and so they're working through that. And uh, after being told what exactly happened, I, I think it would be a real shame if whoever makes the decision, who's the decider here, you know, uh, makes the uh, makes the thing there. Craig, big spur hats, yes. Uh, we do have some available. I, I want to go back to J- Quantrell asked. Quantrell knows asked twice, uh, and, and I never answered. I'm sorry, bud. Uh, who would you say Will Sanders compares to in Major League Baseball, and is the first round hype warranted? Um, I, I, that's a hard question. I would say from a body type, he reminds me of a guy that used to pitch for the Angels, Jeff Weaver, um, but their arm slots aren't the same. But um, from a body type and just kind of from a stuff standpoint, very similar is the first round. Yeah, first, yeah, that's real. Uh, he he's 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 got it. You know, he's going to be in the mid to upper nineties. He's got three pitches, and you know, if he's if he's getting that change up and that slider across for strikes, he's he is a legitimate Friday night guy in the SEC. So, yeah, um, you know, righties with three pitches who throw in the upper nineties and pitch well in this league. They're, they're first rounders, and uh, he, he's got a chance. Well, I'll see what happens, but he's got a chance, no doubt. Oh, uh, yeah. And, and, and it was Jeff Weaver, was that the guy that played uh, for Fullerton State? The pitch that, for Fullerton, he, I guess, Carol, Or was that not Jeff? Was that it was either, Jeff Weaver? It, it was either him or his brother. Yeah. There was two of them. So I can't in remember. 04, I remember. Uh, who was Carolina's closer yeah, that, was Jeff, that year? No, that was yeah, Jeff that Weaver. was Jeff Weaver. Yeah. That was Jeff Because he, he was dominant, and Fullerton ended up getting the beaten game uh, putting them out. Yeah. Uh, who was Carolina's closer? That it year? was. I I that guy was Chad Blackwell. Chad Blackwell. Yep. Chad Blackwell. Dude, that guy. He had a chance. He was one. I, just like a, I would look at him. I was like, I, I don't know. That. I, I couldn't hit. 150 these. pounds, soaking wet, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was like, I, I couldn't hit what he's, he's dialing up here. Yeah. Uh, oh, Craig, I'm going to get them on the. It'll be called. Uh, it'll be on the Carolina Rise site. Well, if Carolina has stuff on it, but it's going to be called because uh, we got the new site. So the old Carolina Rise site is going to become inside the Gamecocks the store. So we'll have all the Carolina Rise stuff there. We'll have stuff from the from the show there. We'll have Big Spur stuff uh, if you'd like to get a uh, Big Spur hat or whatever. Hundred uh, percent of all the the money from the Carolina Rise stuff goes to Rise, and then a, a percentage of everything else goes to Rise too. Uh, but it also goes to support the show and, and the bigspur.com and all that good stuff. So um, I will get that. To, I'll email you the link when I get that live this afternoon since they completed the site uh, for me. All right, guys, lots of lots of good stuff here today. Um, and uh, it's kind of a waiting game with Jeff Coat, the rest of recruiting. But uh, any final thoughts, Phil or, or Jamie here? Yeah, man, I'm just happy to have everybody back. After a day off yesterday, <laughs> it's nice. It's dynamite nice drop in money. <laughs> Phil, yeah. you might as well have... fly ball caught, caught, <laughs> caught. Dynamite drop in, Marty. Those broadcast losers are playing. Yeah, did Euchre passes out. He's like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just happy to have everybody back. This, yeah. this one's uh, over, money. I'm in the bag. At <laughs> 76, just to close, yes, I actually had a conversation with somebody last night. Uh, watch out for Montague Rames specifically. We're talking about Desmond, Umiazulu, and Montague Rames. Both defensive ends, both are in and going to go through spring practice. Uh, I know Umi Azulu is higher rated, but it's kind of like, you know, Cam Smith, Jamie, Jamie Robinson. Cam Smith was highly rated, more highly rated than Jamie Robinson. But in 2019, Jamie Robinson played as a true freshman because his yeah. floor was higher. 
Uh, and so uh, look out for what you're doing with the Rames Umi Azulu comparison. Don't be surprised if Reigns Rames is the first guy up. You, you know, you know, Umi Azulu. I know we gotta go. I think he's actually a little bit heavier. But when I when I just I saw a couple, I think a, a video of him the other day on campus. He, he he does remind me though. I will say he does remind me a little bit of what Devin Taylor looked like when he first stepped mm-hmm. on campus at South Carolina. Just very tall, very lean, uh, and uh, of course th- this kid is much was much more uh, heavily recruited than Devin Taylor ever was. And it, it, honestly, nobody really wanted Devin Taylor. Brad Long said, "Give him to me. I'll take him," and uh, and he and he took him right on into the NFL. So, um, but but when I saw this kid, I'm like, man, he, he kind of reminds me a little bit of Devin Taylor, and uh, sure as hell hope he develops and plays like him because Devin Taylor was a blast to watch. Absolutely. All right, we're gonna wrap it up for Phil Molinax, J.C. Sherver, Jamie Bradford. It's been inside the game, Cox, the show on a Wednesday. We'll be back tomorrow, high energy Thursday, uh, and. Uh, God willing, back Friday and back for next week. Again, apologize for yesterday, but uh, I think I finally, I I didn't realize there was another tool I needed to fight this to go bowling. So I got one. Uh, But anyway, we'll talk to you guys soon. Holla.